Good evening, everyone. Tampa City Council evening session now comes to order uh, for September 30th, 2021, 501. Roll call. Carlson. Here. Maniscalco. Here. Dingfelder. Cedro. Here. Vieira. Miranda. Here. And Goods. Here. We have a fiscal quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Shelby. Yes, thank you. land use related matters of the Tampa City Council is being conducted with a live in-person quorum of the City Council present in City Council chambers. However, in light of continuing COVID-19, government issued health standards or guidance now in effect, the members of the public have the ability to participate virtually through video teleconferencing referred to by Florida statutes and rules as communications media technology or CMT. Now the public is able to watch tonight's meeting on Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15, and on the internet at tampa.gov forward slash live stream, one word. Now there have been um, multiple ways of the public to be able to participate and those are found on the city council's webpage at tampa.gov.net uh, forward slash city council, one word. Uh, in order to participate remotely through CMT, uh, pre-registration was required and uh, that information on how to do that and what needs to be done uh, is at tampa.gov forward slash quasi, Q-U-A-S-I. Now, um, council, there have been opportunities to uh, send in comments in advance um, it, via U.S. mail and email, and written comments received by email or U.S. mail uh, have been distributed to city council, and the comments will be included in the permanent record of the meeting. And um, all comments received are being afforded equal consideration or should be afforded equal consideration as if the comments were made in person. Uh, I should point out that if you are going to be participating on the GoToMeeting platform remotely, please do not use the chat box to communicate with city council members. That's for technical issues only. Again, please do not communicate using the chat box. Uh, all of these uh, um, rules that I have talked about about CMT uh, have been placed in the notice that has been posted and also within the agenda and I would ask City Council to make a motion to adopt uh, those rules to waive the existing rules to adopt the CMT associated rules uh, as part of this meeting please. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Maniscalco uh, is moved. Mr. Citro is uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Now after you open the public hearings Mr. Chairman um, uh, I believe um, Jennifer Malone will be uh, discussing with Council the housekeeping matters on uh, tonight's right. agenda. All right, just for housekeeping matters, I see Mr. Vieira is online now. We have that, Madam Clerk. And Mr. Dean Fellow said he's going to be about 15 minutes late. All right, uh, we go ahead and open public hearings. Mr. Madam Clerk, I move. Mr. S Mr. Uh, Miranda, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are open for business. Item number one, Ms. Malone. Well, if we can, before Ms. Malone begins uh, with the item number one, if she could just address some of the um, uh, how requests for continuances or other housekeeping matters, That's perhaps doing, moving things up on the agenda that may have been requested. Ms. Malone. Ms. Malone. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman. Um, item number seven, TACPA 2114, the applicant has requested a continuance as well as item number 12, TACPA 21-13, and I believe that they are here to request those to you tonight. I would also ask that item sorry, number- Sorry, Ms. Malone, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. May we take those no one at a time, unless they're, unless they're actually related in some form or fashion, because each, each one requires a separate motion. Okay. Should I restate that for the record then separately? Yeah, let's take them, let's take them separately so council can take up each one and then handle it on the agenda and move to the next item. Okay, item seven, TACPA okay. 2114 has requested a continuance. Okay. Chairman, I move item okay. seven uh, B considered continue to January 20th, 2022. Have a second by Mr. Maniscalco. Yes, Mr. Shelby. If we can also state the time, please. And time would be, uh, not say, but I would imagine it's at six o'clock in the evening. Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Miranda, is it, it was six o'clock, sir, or seven? Well, seven. Seven item number seven yeah. at six o'clock, because council has not made a decision as to what time it wants to begin after gotcha. the first item of the year. Item number seven at okay. six o'clock. Mr. Maniscalco was seconded. 
All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and that again is January 20th. Thank you. Item number 12, TACPA 21-13. The applicant is here to request a continuance, but I do not know to which date they are going to request, so I'm going to uh, hand it over to the applicant. All right, do we have the applicant on lot or on the second floor or uh, registered? Yes, Teresa Caddick is online. She just need to unmute herself and turn on her video. Can you turn your video on, ma'am? <clears throat> Madam Deputy Cook, you said you do have her, but she's uh, having yep. a good... All right. She's on now. All right, I think Teresa, we have her. unmute yourself. Click on the mic icon and unmute oh, yourself. Yay, I figured it out. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, good evening, council members and staff. My name is Teresa Caddick. I'm president of Showman's Rest, Inc. Um, Showman's Rest is a not-for-profit charged with managing and caring for the Showman's Rest Cemetery, which is the resting place for the members of the Showman's Association. Um, we have, we're here tonight, this evening, to respectfully request a continuance until February 22nd, uh, 2022, to allow us more time to meet with the neighbors and homeowners association to share our plans. Um, there seems to be a lot of um, misconceptions swirling around at this point, and um, uh, it's such as the property is a part of Woodlawn Cemetery, which it is not, <clears throat> such as there might be remains buried on the property. We've done two, phase one and so, phase two. Mail, I'm, so, I'm, mail, mail. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, no, that's fine. I, my name is Martin Shelby. I'm the city council attorney. Uh, rather than get into the facts tonight, the, okay. the uh, mm -hmm. and I believe, did you say February 22nd? Mm -hmm. That seems, when I re um, requested, they said that was the earliest um, available. Okay, well, we have February 24th, which is a Thursday, according to the calendar. Thursday, February 24th. Um, council does not meet on the 22nd. Well, okay. Well, so, I just got some bad information. Well, Can I request, respectfully request the continuance to February 24th? Now, if that you can state what the basis would be without getting into the specific facts of the matter, because we're outside of being able to bring it in for a public hearing, we're holding it now because we want okay. to address your request for a continuance. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so you do want me to say it's why you, I want a continuance? Uh, yes. Um, well, we feel like there's um, a lot of misconceptions. I mean, that's, I, I think that's where I was headed. Um, I feel like um, as the applicant, we'd like to have some more time to get with the neighborhood associations and the homeowners associations share the plans um you know the the facts as we know them instead of um some misconceptions that are going on and and um we felt that um with a continuance with more time um we could um clear up a lot of these things and have people understand why and what we were um, hoping to accomplish Mr. Chair? You're recognized, sir. I'd like to ask in file number TACPA 21-13, ask for a continuance until February 24th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Mr. Elko is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. If I can, Mr. You're Chairman. You're recognized. Um, and, and correct me for, from the Planning Commission's perspective with regard to notice. If there is public who is uh, members of the public who are listening, uh, whether uh, downstairs or maybe those who have registered online, 
and the matter now is continued. The only notice they are receiving would be the notice that they hear tonight. Is that correct, Ms. Malone? That is my understanding, yes. Okay, so then, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just so the public is informed that this item, again, this item is number 12, number 12 will not be heard tonight, and it is being continued by City Council uh, to the 24th of February, February 24th of 2022, at 6 p.m. There will be no other notice given, so um, uh, please do make a note of it, um, and uh, please know that if you are online, the matter will not be heard tonight, but has been continued by motion of City Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. And thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much. And I have just two more housekeeping items. Uh, first, we're requesting that item 15 is moved to Malone, number one, one second. on the agenda. Ms. Malone, just one second. In case we have anybody online or anybody downstairs, just so you know, this item has been continued until February 24th, 2022. All right, Ms. Malone, you can continue. Thank you, uh, Chairman. We're requesting that item 15, TACPA 21-21 is moved to number one on the agenda. 15, item number one. All right. Ms. Malone, was there another one that also had to be moved up? Okay, yes, we're you. also requesting that item number 13, the CIP and the CIS for 2021 is moved to item number two. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else, Ms. Malone? Hmm. That was it. And then whenever we're ready to take um, item number one, TACPA 21-21, I would just like permission to share my screen. All right, Ms. Malone, item number uh, 13, which is the item number one, which was uh, split for 15, you can now state your case. Thank you, Jennifer Malone here with the Planning Commission, but I'm actually gonna turn it over to Mark Hudson. I'm just uh, showing the screen for him. Thank you, uh, Mark Hudson, Planning Commission staff. Uh, can you hear me? Can we, uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Great. Uh, again, Mark Hudson, Planning Commission staff. I'm here this evening to present to you a property rights element for inclusion in your Imagine 2040 Tampa Conference of Plan. Jennifer, if I could have the next slide. The reason that I'm here this evening is uh, to, to introduce to you a new element for your plan uh, surrounding the issue of property rights. Uh, this new element is required by some action taken during the last legislative session known as House Bill 59. Uh, Governor DeSantis signed this on June 29th and it became effective of July 1st of this year. Uh, the element is designed to ensure that property rights are considered in our local decision-making processes in Tampa. And this, of course, doesn't only just impact Tampa, it impacts every single jurisdiction in the state of Florida. Uh, our staff and your staff has analyzed this, and we think that the impacts of this element are rather limited. Uh, the city of Tampa has always been very mindful to protect private property rights of its citizens. Uh, however, there is this requirement to include this language now into your conference plan. There is a penalty for failure to do so. Uh, and primarily what it does is it was, uh, imposes delays in the processing of other private and public plan amendments that have been initiated after July 1st of this year. If I could have the next slide. This new element is uh, rather slim. Uh, we were advised by the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity to uh, be very mindful and, and stick to the intent of the legislation. Uh, there is always opportunities at later dates and future phases to add additional things if it's so the desire of the uh, city. Uh, but currently we have one goal, one objective, and one policy. Uh, the policy reads, acknowledge private property rights to ensure their consideration in the local decision-making processes of the city of Tampa. And the objective is to respect private property rights in the city of Tampa. If I could have the next slide. 
And I won't read through, this is the single policy, but this language comes verbatim out of the legislation. Uh, our staff, again, has analyzed this, and also your legal and planning staff has taken a look at this. And we do not feel that it has, uh, uh, we don't feel it has major impacts to the operations of the uh, municipality. If I could have the next slide. Our staff did review this uh, to ensure that it was consistent with your plan. And in particular, we looked at the goals, uh, 20 of them that are in your future land use summit, which are basically designed to implement your overall vision of your community. Uh, these were goals related to the liberal cities, uh, the central city, uh, mixed use corridors and alike. And uh, we feel that this uh, new element uh, will not impede uh, your ability to, to reach those goals. Uh, we did, uh, we do believe that this meets the requirements of House Bill 59. Um, and we actually asked for an unofficial review by the Department of Economic Opportunity. Uh, and they concurred with us that they felt that this does as well. Of course, we have to transmit this to them to get their official review, but we feel fairly confident that we'll meet those requirements. Again, we did supply this to your, your legal staff and planning staff. They had some minor work spending, but nothing of, of major significance. Next slide. This is the timeline that we're operating under for the city of Tampa. The planning commission reviewed this on August 24th and found it consistent with the Imagine 2040 a Tampa conference of plan. Uh, we're here to uh, hold a transmittal hearing this evening uh, and we're projecting an adoption hearing date to bring this back to you uh, at the beginning of next year, January 27th. I will say we're doing this for all the jurisdictions in Hillsborough County. Uh, on the uh, 21st, Temple Terrace transmitted their property rights element, which is very similar to the one that I just presented to you. Uh, Plant City did the same on uh, the 27th this past Monday, and uh, we expect uh, the uh, county to do likewise uh, in the latter half of October. If I can have the next slide. With that, Planning Commission recommends that the proposed text amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Conference Plan. Again, this is a transmittal hearing, and I stand for any questions. Thank you. Mr. Randall, you're recognized, sir. Yes, sir, if I may. First of all, um, I understand what the uh, policies are with the governor's sign and so forth. I believe I do. But then, by ordinance, I'll be sent the 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan, but this is by policy, so I have a concern there. Then when you look at the, so by, uh, I was reading the, the, the whole text on this number one item, then I find things that were interesting. Number three, which fits the plan, specifically names 809 West Lime Ball Avenue. Number four, it's a category in general for a mixed use. Number five, however, is a little different. It specifically says north of Animal Drive and east of Newtrue Parkway. It doesn't say how far north or how far east. It could go all the way to St. Petersburg, I guess. Number six, it talks about Collins Park only. Number seven, only talks about Temple Crest Park. Number eight, only talks about Woodlawn Cemetery. Number nine, only speaks directly to the Daniel Del Rio Pool, which I believe is Cascaden Park, I'm not sure. And number 10, only speaks to Sierra Circle Park. So when I look at that, some little red flags come to appear to my head, and uh, you can almost tell, since I don't try to hide them with hair, you have how far north and how far east? Can we answer at least that question? I'm afraid I'm not sure if that relates to the item that I just presented. Is that uh, another item on the agenda? Well, this is, you're talking about the uh, uh, what we can do and not do with the changes of, of the boundaries of the, what you want, less than one acre, more than one acre, or so forth. Is that, is that the same thing we're talking about? Uh, perhaps Mr. Hay or Ms. Malone might be able to respond. Okay. <laughs> uh, Councilman uh, David Hay with your Planning Commission staff. I, um, this was originally item 15, and we have moved 15 up to number one, which is, T this is TACPA 21-21. I, I think you're referencing another, a, a different plan amendment. Well, 15 is, uh, as I look at it, it's a generic one, isn't it? It covers what you, you can do and you should do by law. Am I correct? Well, it, it's specifically in regards to House Bill 59. Right. And what this legislature has directed and, jurisdiction to implement 
uh, within their um, comprehensive plan. Right, and then what I read is not specific to that, it's just because this is specific. It, I found this in the number one deal, item number one on the agenda. So then this is the item number two now, is that it? No. They asked for item number 15 to become so number one. To become number one. So then this one is not one. It becomes 1A. I guess. You can't have two number ones. No. So what we did mm -hmm. was we, we, just, we just saying number 15 is one, but when I get ready to finish it all, I'm going to go to number one on the sheet. But right now we're on number 15. We just saying we're just taking Oh, the I see. Okay. I apologize for wasting your time. Yeah, we're just taking 15 and 13 just to be first Maybe. to ask you. Thank you very much. But I knew where you were going at on that yep. other situation. <laughs> Everyone knows where you're going on that situation. All right. Any other questions for item number 15 that we move to item that we move to number one? Is it your answer? Anybody from the public to speak on the side? Anybody raise your speaker on the side? No raise to speakers. All right, you need, us, you need us to move this now, Mr. Hay? All right. All right. Mr. Maniscalco has moved it. Mr. Sister has seconded it. I'm not sure, but we're going to do a roll call. Please. Boots? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Citro? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dingfelder? And Carlson. Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Dingfelder being absent at vote. Thank you very much. I look forward to being before you again in January of 2022. All right. Item number 13. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to share my screen. I confirm that you can see my screen, gentlemen. We can see it. Go ahead. Great. Good evening, gentlemen. People here at the Commission staff. This is the first reading of the ordinance update to the schedule of projects into the conference plan. This is a routine annual update that is required by Chapter 1 specifically. Well, one minute, one minute, sir. Uh, IT, can we get a little volume on here? He's very unclear so we can hear him. Try it again, sir. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Diego Guerra, Planning Commission staff. This is the first reading of the ordinance to update the schedule of projects into the comprehensive plan. This is a routine annual update that is required by Chapter 163 of Florida statute. Chapter 163 of Florida statutes requires that the schedule of projects be a subset of the CIP which addresses the level of service and adopted into the comprehensive plan be updated on an annual basis. The update would replace the existing schedule found in the comprehensive plan with the schedule list listed in your packet. City staff identified projects in the CIP that affect the level of service and it's these items that make up the schedule of projects, which are then reviewed by Planning Commission staff. The update is accomplished by ordinance and is permitted by Chapter 163, which is uh, not the normal plan amendment process. Additionally, the plans of other agencies are adopted by reference into the schedule through an existing policy in the capital improvement section. Gentlemen, there are five program areas included in the schedule. Water, wastewater, transportation, stormwater, and infrastructure and mobility and consist of a total of 71 projects that address levels of service. A total five-year funding amount for these projects approximately $1.78 billion. Planning Commission staff examined the schedule with respect to the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. Capital Improvement Policy 1.3.2 dictates that funding should first be expended on projects that eliminate deficiencies, second, replace needed facilities, and third, to provide future growth, which is consistent with the schedule allocating approximately 88% of the scheduled funding for projects that eliminate or replace 
At its 14 September uh, public hearing, the Planning Commission found the, the at the time proposed FY22, FY26 capital improvement section schedule of projects consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan and recommend that uh, City Council adopt the uh, schedule of projects into the Comprehensive Plan. Gentlemen, this concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions if you have any. Any questions, item number 13? Any questions? Anybody from the public to speak on this item on the second floor or uh, anyone registered to speak on this item? No registered speakers for this item. I just want to make sure uh, that this is regarding 71 projects totaling $1.78 billion, $927,715. Is that correctly about what it is? Planning Commission? Yes, sir. The, the, the funds are already allocated with the capital improvement program and the uh, city's annual budget. Um, it's just that a part of the CIP that's presented uh, to the council with the budget is the schedule of projects. The schedule of projects addresses levels of service and goes and must be adopted per state uh, statute in the comprehensive plan. Anything else, Mr. Wren? Uh, no, it's just so many figures here, it's hard to find them all at one second. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. We had nobody on the second floor and nobody raised it, correct? That's correct. Mr. Citro has moved to close. Second. Mr. Maniscalco was second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, Mr. Maniscalco, I guess you're up first on the batting order. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan Capital Improvement Program and Capital Improvement Section by replacing the Capital Improvement Program and the Capital Improvement Section Schedule of Projects with the Capital Improvement Program and Capital Improvement Schedule of Projects for fiscal year 2022 through fiscal year 2026, providing repeal of all ordinances in conflict providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, Mr. Citro is seconded. Roll call, please. Carlson? Yes. Dingfelder? Vieira? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Dingfelder being absent at vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. All right. We'll go to item number one. Second item. Yeah. yeah, item number one, Ms. Malone. Jennifer Malone, Dear Planning Commission, if I can have permission to share my screen. Okay, this is item number one, Tampa Comprehensive Plan Text Amendment 21-01. It's an adoption hearing for the four area ratio blend in the central Tampa Planning District. Um, as a refresher, this was privately initiated. It was transmitted to the Department of Economic Opportunity by this council on June 24th, 2021. Uh, DEO had no comment on the proposed amendment. Um, you might recall that back in June, the language was amended at the direction of city council. So it's slightly different from what the planning commission saw, but, but generally um, achieves the same purpose with some more restrictions. So the proposed policy will expand upon the allowance of a proportionate weight of density and intensity if the subject site is within two future land use designations. This can be achieved through approval of a plan development or a plan development alternative zoning, and if the site is within a half mile of an urban village. Um, on the next screen, I will show this was the language that was transmitted to de the, the Department of Economic Opportunity. So land use policy 5.1.6 already exists in the plan, and the proposal is just to expand it to allow this um, this provision to take place outside of an urban village within a half mile, but it cannot be utilized outside of the Central Tampa Planning District. And the Planning Commission and staff did find the language consistent with several compre comprehensive plan objectives and policies, and we are recommending consistency today for adoption. And that concludes my presentation, and I'm available for questions, and I know the applicant is on the line as well. Any questions? 
Randy, you recognize it. Well, him. thank you very much, right? And I hate to be an old horse like myself, but this is the uh, second number one. That's why I was a little confused in the beginning. But let me say this. Uh, this is by policy, and these are set really by ordinance, I believe. But just reading all this thing, and, and please stop me and correct me if I'm in the wrong avenue here. When I went through the listings that I saw on another page one and, and uh, further down in the scope, it was uh, specifically on a lot of items. Uh, mobility, staff does not object to blah, 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 809 West Lineball Avenue. Mobility staff, City of Tampa does not object to what? Amendment to Collins Park, amendment to Temp uh, Temple Heights, Temple Crest Park, amendment to Wooden Lawn Cemetery, amendment to Daniel Del Rio Pool, Sierra Circle Park. However, when I come to what I call number five, it speaks about the future land use element, and it says in broad form, generally north of Edible Drive. Well, anything north of Edible Drive can go all the way to the end of District 6, which is Precinct 109, if I recall, and it's out there near the northernmost part on the other side of Fowler Avenue. Then you go east of New Street Parkway, and here's where it becomes tricky because east of, north of New Street Parkway, New Street Parkway starts in Lake and 14th Street, which is now 14th Street and New Street Parkway, all the way heading uh, south in a meandering manner to uh, the corner of Cass and Nebraska. So my question is to myself, that's why I'm bringing it up to everybody else so myself can understand what's going on. It's very simple. How far north are we going with this and how far east is east? Because it could be a small partial of land or a big one. It says it's got to be more I believe in one acre, at least one acre, but it doesn't say how big. And this is really, really big. Yes, um, I'm just going to show my screen again. I think I understand the question um, a little bit better. So this is the um, outlined in green, what kind of borders some warrants, but this is the central Tampa planning district. So it encompasses a lot of the city and then these urban villages are what's in these colors here. Um, so this, right now this provision can only be utilized within the urban villages, but the applicant is requesting that the provision be utilized within a half mile radius of an urban village, but not outside of the Central Tampa Planning District. But does that apply to all the ones that I mentioned? Like Danny Del Rio Pool, for instance? Well, you, I mentioned, uh, Mobility up to the one very specific, Sierra Circle Park, very specific, Daniel uh -huh. Del Rio Pool, very specific, right. Temple Crest Park, very specific, Collins Park, and very specific, 809 West Lineball Avenue. But when it comes to this yes. one that I, I call number five, it's not very specific, it's broad form. So if you look at your map, it says north of Adamo Drive, and you can, you can just about tell where it's at. It's, uh, and then east, of New Hampshire Parkway. Well, east of New Hampshire Parkway. You can go all the way to St. Pete. Is that, uh, are those staff comments for TA? Sorry, David. <clears throat> no, uh, uh, um, Councilman, uh, this is David Hay. I, I think, are, are you referencing the city's comments in regards to um, the other amendments? Because sometimes the city includes their comments um, in one email for all the amendments. I, I believe that's what you're referencing. I don't know what he's referencing. I see where well, you're going with that, Mr. Randy. Well, I, I mean, you I know, see where I'm, you're going. I'm not trying to go anywhere. I'm trying to find out what the other guy doesn't yeah, know that right. I should and know I, that I, I haven't learned to now know. Now I look at the map, but I see, I see where you're going. And we talk about <laughs> urban village and these boundaries. Right. When I look at the Pacific area you're talking about, to me, that's it's all what I, what I call, there's an idea somewhere. I'm not saying there is, but you might be on the right track, Dick Tracy. There's an idea somewhere. You know, Colombo taught me a lot of things, <laughs> and this is one of them. It's hard for me to, if I'm asked a question or any other council members ask a question, what happened tonight on this item? And I say, I don't know, it's just east of New Hampshire Parkway, north of Adamo Drive. And they won't say, well, tell me where. I can't tell them where. That's all. This is probably private text amendment, private uh, initiated. 
Can we... Yes, sir. And the applicant is here. I think he's uh, has uh, can probably help answer the question and has a presentation. Good. Any, qu any, to... any questions for Ms. Malone before we get to the applicant? <laughs> I think everybody's going to have some questions for Mr. Hudson. No, I just found this by accident, believe me <laughs> what I tell you. You only been here for two days. I know about went by accident. I've been here a few days only. <laughs> any, any other questions for Ms. Malone? Well, let's hear from the applicant. Thank you. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. Uh, I'm the applicant for this text amendment. Uh, if I could share my screen real quick. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, it's at the top of very small. Oh, there it is. You brought it for us. So to give a little bit of background on how we got here, this application was filed back in January of this year. Uh, in April, the Planning Commission staff uh, found the request consistent. In May, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. Uh, we were here in June, late June, for the transmittal hearing to DEO, and we actually had a pretty full conversation um, about what this does, what this text amendment does, and what it does very specifically. Uh, Councilman Dingfelder and some other members of council had some concerns. I think the specific quote was that we were using a hammer when all we needed was a fly swatter. And so at that same hearing, council was kind enough to let us work on a more narrowly tailored text amendment, which uh, this council unanimously approved the, the transmittal of up to Tallahassee. And then since June, uh, the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity had, had no objections. Well, so let's talk about the problem that we're trying to fix with this tax amendment. Oops, sorry. I see what you have here, but I, I can't digest it because it's so small. And, and I, what you just said, and I believe, Mr. Hudson, all you said is correct. However, what happens in politics is that you reference something we voted on without really knowing exactly what we voted on. Uh, this could be some land east of... Uh, of uh, of Nuxio Parkway and west, uh, north, no more north than Palm, across all the way out, or it could be all the way out to uh, where I said, I think it's Precinct 109, way up there near the boundaries of the city and the county on that side of District 6, which Ms. Calco serves now. And, and all, I, all I'm asking for is, where is this piece of property at? You might have known, you followed. Sure. Yep. So, so Council Miranda, th this is a text amendment. And so unlike, I think, most of the other map, am map amendments that you have before you, and you mentioned some addresses and some, some specific uh, like ded city dedicated parks in some of your remarks, th this amendment before you is just to add a, a paragraph of words into the comprehensive plan. It doesn't change the status of, of any individual piece of land at all that that it does not do that um, this again is is a text amendment what I'm showing you on screen and what Jennifer shared earlier is the central Tampa planning district in the the paragraph the words that we're asking you to add tonight into the comp plan the comprehensive plan those words can only apply within the overall boundary you're seeing that's the central Tampa planning district which as this council, I think, has indicated and, and might indicate on a later item tonight, is an area of the city where we seem to be wanting to drive more growth um, because it does encompass what we think of as the central portion of the city. Now, these these sort of purple and these uh, splotches, so to speak, that are on screen, those are urban villages. And right now, if you're in an urban village and you're a, a project that's a PD rezoning that comes to this group for, for rezoning approval. And let's say you have two different future land use categories within your development. You're allowed to add them up and blend them together within your site. It prevents things from being lopsided, from one half of your development being uh, six stories tall, the other being two stories tall. That you're able to blend them together. What we're asking for tonight and what this paragraph of text that we're requesting go into the comprehensive plan does is it allows you to do that same blending, but instead of just out inside of these boxes that are on the screen, 
you're able to do it within a half mile of the boundary of those boxes if your project is at least an acre and you're going through a, a PD rezoning or a PDA rezoning, something that's gonna to come to this council. So I, I can't necessarily show you exactly every single uh, piece of land that this may affect in the future, but generally it is the areas that are within one half mile of these colorful shapes on screen. Those are the urban villages. Um, and if, if, if it's okay, I'd like to go back to the beginning of my presentation just to underscore a little bit about why we're requesting this. I, I can understand what, what, what you're alluding to, sir, and I appreciate it very much, but this is just not specific enough for me because it, it jingles at least one acre, that's fine, uh, one and a half radius of an urban village boundary, I understand that. And, and nothing can be, shall not apply to any lands outside of the central Tampa planning. I understand that. <clears throat> However, it's still a very large portion of land that compasses. So you may have one here and one here, or you may have them together making something that equals eight or 10 acres. That's all I'm saying. Thank you very much. And I will not be supporting this part. Thank you. Okay, if it's okay, I'd like to just briefly finish the presentation. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Hudson. Yes, sir? You can finish, sir, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, so, I, again, the, the problem is, is that you have these different intensities, different densities within a PE, um, and the, the text amendment that we have crafted, and, and largely with some of the Council and Dinkfelder's suggestion, um, is, is really about as narrow as, as this can get. Um, as, as Councilman Moran just alluded to, uh, we, we have a lot of restrictions in place. And again, this can only be utilized if it's gonna go through a planned development or a PDA. So th this isn't some uh, release or delegation of, of this council's authority when it comes to how it's gonna be used. Anytime any piece of land, any developer wants to use this, they're gonna have to come to city council. And if uh, there is a reason why this council is uncomfortable with the development they're proposing uh, and utilizing it, then this council will have the discretion to, to deny that. Um, again, the, the original scope of the application was that it could be anywhere in the central Tampa planning district. That has now been significantly reduced solely to the parcels that are uh, within a half mile of that urban village boundary uh, that are an acre, at least in size. And, uh, and which are, are going to go through a PD or PDA rezoning. This project, as we mentioned at the last hearing, this issue came up because in connection with the planning for the Gasworks project, there are several parcels that are not in an urban village at all. And in discussions with the planning commission, uh, it turns out that it is very difficult to change the boundaries of those urban villages because they're often tied to another planning process, such as a CRA boundary or a historic district map. Um, and given that project's adjacency to the Ybor City Historic District, we want to be able to use the density for our entire site in a way that's respectful of the historic district. Right now, we could be really forced to have significant amounts of density right next to a historic district boundary. This allows us to avoid that and be more flexible. And that's, that's why we're asking for this uh, this evening. And with that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions that other, other council members might have. Any other council members have any questions? Mr. Mascow, you recognize, wow. I keep thinking about, just a comment, I keep thinking about Al Capone's character in The Untouchables, uh -huh. baseball. Oh, wow. That's the, whole, that's the whole quote. Baseball. <laughs> okay, all right, anything else, sir? That's it, okay, all right. Mr. Thistle, does that, that's your answer? Okay, all right, okay. All right, Mr. Hudson, you finished your presentation, sir? Uh, yes, I'll have to, uh, I'd like to a little bit of time for rebuttal if possible, but. All right, okay, all right. Uh, anybody here to speak on the side? Anybody on the second floor speak on the side? No one is registered to speak no on the side. I know Mr. Dinfield got here a little bit late. I don't know if he wants to get a little review before he, uh, we close this matter. I'll give him a few seconds. Is 
this is this the, is this a privately initiated plan amendment? Yes, sir. Privately initiated. Uh, Mr. Mr. Miranda's main contention to this project is it, it gives no boundary limits. It's, uh, Council members, um, if I may address um, something that was brought up. Mr. Hay, you recognize. I, uh, I believe uh, Councilman Miranda has brought up page 11 of the packet. Page 11 is an email um, from the Mobility Department um, in regards to the February cycle of amendments, which this amendment was one of many amendments, how the Mobility Department in the city responds to our requests for information is they provide one email with a whole bunch of different amendments on it, and each comment is outlined. So the only reason why this uh, email is included in your packet is because it references at the top this one particular amendment, 2101. All the other ones that are referenced on page 11 are other amendments uh, that, uh, and I believe 2105 was brought up that was approved by council uh, in July, that amendment. So I just want to clarify that, that all those comments on that page uh, below 2101 does not apply to this amendment. So I hope that clarifies. Um, well, that's a great way of presenting it. Einstein couldn't figure it out. That's, the, that's how we get the email from the I, city. I'm not, I'm not disputing that, sir. I think Mr. Deanfeld is looking for me to give him a few more seconds and uh, before I, uh, we move on the side. So who's proposing this? I apologize for my tardiness. I, I am counseling. You are? Yes, I'm, I am the, yeah, I defer to Ms. Johnson Villas. So, but Tyler, Tyler, who is that on behalf of? I mean, is it's, this... it's on behalf of the Gasworks development, the Daryl Shaw Kettler development. That, that's, that's what this proposal is aimed at fixing. But instead of just applying it to that project, we're using a text amendment to limit its scope because while the Gasworks project is the first one that I think may have revealed this uh, little shortcoming in the comp plan. This is a good idea. We believe it's good planning and it's going to affect other projects in the future. Okay, and, and David I, uh, and council, I apologize. Um, David, can you explain in, in one minute or less the pros and cons of, of this and, and how it impacts projects and how it might impact community? Well, I, I think I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer because Jennifer was the case planner um, regarding this and she could probably give you a little more um, information. Right. Just give me the give me the concise version. Sure. So right now when there's a land use line, like if a parcel is split, um, we're very specific and, and it's not in an urban village. We have to be very specific with how the density and intensity is allocated with that line uh, that's on the parcel. With this amendment, and this is already allowed in the urban villages only, an applicant can blend the density and intensity or spread it across the site if there are two future land use designations. So this amendment is requesting to expand that to parcels outside of urban villages within a half mile radius and only within the Central Tampa Planning District. And all of the urban villages are in the Central Tampa Planning District already, but the half mile radius is uh, just to make sure, well, we just don't want, if the radius goes outside of the Central Tampa District, that you know they can't use this provision outside of the Central Tampa Planning District. And, and I one can put the language on the screen again if you'd like, sir. I'm sorry, David. And one follow-up, uh, this was presented previously to council, and I believe this is negotiated a language that occurred that evening um, that then you all voted to transmit up to DEO. 
right? On June 24th, on June 24th, we presented language that was submitted by the applicant and council felt that it was uh, too broad. So the applicant and staff uh, took a break and we went off to the side virtually and came up with some language that council felt uh, better suited, um, was, they were, were more comfortable with transmitting the revised language to the Department of Economic Opportunity in June. Yeah, I knew it, I knew it looked familiar. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Vera, did I see your hand, sir? Mr. Vera? Did I see your hand, um, sir? Um, okay, Ms. Um, you know what? You it, it didn't, but I'll, I'll say something. I mean, just from, then I'll get to Ms. Velez Johnson. Ms. Johnson Velez, I'll, I'll get to you right after Mr. Mr. Vera. Oh, I, I I wasn't. I actually I was I was muting and unmuting myself on my computer. But I, but I will say something. I mean, given that this. Um, you know, I, I understand the concerns on this potentially being too expansive, but we sent it back to, you know, narrowly tailored a little bit. That doesn't necessarily mean you vote for it, but, you know, it, uh, it, it I think that takes care of at least on, on my end, some of those uh, initial concerns that sort of raised the red flag, but uh, just my two thoughts. I'll probably chime in later, but thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Uh, Jones, well, as you recognize. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, Susan Johnson, Velez, Legal Department. I, I did want to clarify and to follow up on Mr. Miranda's um, comments. This this is a text amendment, and, and Tyler's comments as well. This is a text amendment, and so it, it does not apply um, as proposed to a specific piece of property, but it would apply to all properties that fall within um, the description of the, of, of the amendment. So within the central planning district and within a mile radius of those urban villages. So, the map that I believe is part of Ms. Malone's presentation does show the area uh, in which this text amendment could be applied to specific pieces of property, if that clarifies. So, so your um, consideration is whether, as a policy, you would like to change the current policy in the comp plan to allow uh, the proposal that's before you this evening, whether you believe that that's um, a good policy decision. And Mr. Chairman, that's exciting. Yeah, Ms. Velez said it much better than I did. I said, we do it by order. Now, this is by policy. And, and then I, I, I'm not objected to anything other than it doesn't specifically say the rest of them that I read. And I understand that was, and notice what they've said. Well, remember in June, you voted for it. What happens politically is that we deal with so many things at so many times and so quickly that you blame us, not you per se, Ms. Velez, please don't take that personal. Then it's us to say, no, we, have, we voted for it. But did we fairly understand that? Well, you voted for it, and then this is what happens. When you have something as vague as this, north of something and east of something else, well, that could be Lando Lakes, and that could be Plant City, I mean, uh, St. Petersburg heading east. So I, I, don't, I just don't know if he wanted to do that. I'm not afraid anyone to do it this, this, and this with a specific area, and I would vote for all of it. But I don't like to play cards. I know how many cards are left in the deck. Anyone else on the side? All right. Well, uh, we have nobody to speak on this item, and there's no race to guess on this item, correct? There are no rights to speakers. And, Mr. Chairman, I've been informed there's nobody downstairs on this item. I guess we'll move to close. Then. Is there a rebuttal? Mr. Scott. Rebuttal. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I think there's some confusion about this, um, and I'd like to ask for a continuance. This is a good idea. It's an important idea for a very important project in Tampa, the Gasworks project, um, like all of you, which all of you are familiar with. So at, at the risk of this getting denied tonight due to some confusion, that is understandable, but um, I think detrimental to the success of an important project in the urban core of the city. Uh, I, I'd like to request a continuance to uh, the, the earliest possible date um, so that I can have the opportunity, Councilman Miranda, to sit with you and, and talk about this and anyone else um, who has a little bit of, of skepticism about that. I understand that. I, I understand this reads vaguely, um, but this is the most specific way to describe what we're trying to do without literally just having it apply to a single project which i don't think is is good planning or fair so um i would ask council's discretion for uh for a continuance this evening well so my uh, entertain it continues if show me no no is there a second to that before second to the second. 
Good to, to the continuums? Okay. Now, we need, now we need a date. Um, who, uh, is there a date that would be able to, Ms. Malone, would you be able to assist on this? Uh, sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I don't have right. I don't have the city caseload in front of me, but I know we have plan amendments going on the evening of um, January 27th. Um, I can't speak to November and December caseload, um, but I know we have some some spots. And then I think we have plan amendments going on February 24th as well. It looks like there's only one um, a night meeting in both November and December because of the holidays. And um, I don't know whether if those are full, um, and I don't know if city staff knows the, 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 the number of cases that have been set for that night. Uh, it depends how long uh, this item uh, takes, um, Council. Uh, does the does, 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 does January work, Tyler? Or is that too January long? January works great. Uh, this will be very quick the next time it's on here because I will work very hard to talk to each of you about this longer than you'd probably like me to. But uh, I, I don't want to burden what is already a busy schedule, so I think January works for me. All right. January, January 27th of 2022 at 6 p.m. All right. So Ms. Maniscalco has moved. Ms. Central seconded it. All in favor? All right. opposed? All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You just, just, just a reminder, uh, I, Mr. Hudson did suggest that he wanted to talk with City Council. Uh, just a reminder that this matter, uh, because it uh, affects the comprehensive plan, has been deemed to be a legislative matter. There is no um, uh, concern about ex parte communications that need to be disclosed on this. You can hear from all parties relative to legislative matters, reg legislative um, uh, comp plan changes. So I just want you to know that, um, that what normally applies to rezonings, um, in these cases tonight, as a matter of fact, none of them are quasi-judicial. They are all legislative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shelby. Item number two. And I'm sorry, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Don't apologize. You're doing your job, sir. If you have questions, you can ask get the answers. Good evening, Council Members. David Hay with your Planning Commission staff. If I could share my screen, please. Hopefully you're seeing my screen. Not yet, sir. No, oh, we got it now. All right. Um, the next item uh, for your review this evening, uh, this is an adoption hearing uh, for uh, TACPA 21-04. This is in regards to the neighborhood mixed use uh, future land use categories. Uh, this is publicly initiated by the city of Tampa. It was transmitted to the Department of Econop Economic Opportunity on July 22nd of 2021 and DEO had no comment uh, regarding the request. A little background, this is initiated by the City of Tampa. It's seeking to amend the Neighborhood Mixed Youth 16, the Neighborhood Mixed Youth 24, and the Neighborhood Mixed Youth 35 uh, future land use categories. Uh, the request removes the requirement that buildings must be either residential or vertically integrated mixed use to be able to utilize maximum FAR. It also adds the word general in the land use description, thus allowing consideration for additional general commercial uses that are not currently permitted in the neighborhood mixed use uh, zoning code. Uh, currently, the neighborhood mixed use 35 is the only neighborhood mixed use category that has actually been placed on land. Here we are, uh, uh, this large circle is the West Riverfront area is, you know, this is the river here. This, uh, this is the Interstate 275 down here. Uh, this is the large area of NMU 35. And then um, there is a small pocket uh, just to the south, uh, of, uh, south of the city uh, building on North Boulevard, actually, which is right here. Um, it's down, um, I believe that's uh, Cypress. Um, your planning commission did find this consistent um, it, with a number of policies regarding the promotion of a mixed use uh, communities. Again, uh, this will continue to promote uh, vertical mixed use uh, within that neighborhood through the zoning code. It also is consistent with the promotion of the uh, redevelopment of the West Riverfront area. Um, 
And based on that, your planning commission does recommend that the proposed text amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan. That concludes my presentation. I believe Randy Gores from the city is also online and may have a presentation as well, or, or is available for questions. Any questions, Hello, Council. Mr. Any questions, Mr. Hay, this time? Any questions, Mr. Hay? All right, Mr. Gores, you're up next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Randy Gore, City Planning Department. Uh, I'll just be brief. If you remember, this was the uh, tax amendment to allow the non-residential uh, uses that would be uh, uh, allowed in the category to uh, take advantage of the same FAR as the residential or mixed-use projects. Uh, and specifically in the West River area, there are a few uh, non-residential projects uh, that we expect to see, one of them a grocery store, uh, another one is the Cultural Arts or Technology Center, uh, and then there may be a uh, African uh, museum in the area. Uh, and this allows uh, those projects to move forward uh, with the same development pattern as the residential or mixed use projects. So uh, we would uh, 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 welcome your support of the plan amendment. Any questions, Mr. Gores? Any questions? All right. Anyone uh, to speak on this item? Anyone want to speak on this item? Item number two. Number two. Anybody register to speak on this item, Madam Clerk? Yes, we have two registered speakers for this item. All right. Good evening, City Council. My name is Nicole Neugebauer, and I'm an attorney at Stern Zebra Miller in Tampa. Uh, my address is 401 East Jackson Street, for the record. Um, I'm here to provide public comment in support of CPA 21-04 to amend the NMU categories. I was part of the team that worked on the related West River redevelopment, and during that process we realized that the NMU 35 language was just not accomplishing the goal and intent of the West River plan. Uh, both Planning Commission and City staff have recommended approval of the comp plan amendment after a careful examination of the history of this area. Um, we, were, we really appreciate Planning Commission and City staff for recognizing this issue and working with our team to move forward with the comp plan amendment because this is a great opportunity for the city and the West River community. And yesterday we actually celebrated the grand opening of three towers in West River and we believe this amendment will allow the team to continue this record of success. Um, with that, I ask for your approval of CPA 21-04 and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions of the app? Another registered speaker, uh, Madam Clerk? Chair, the other registered speaker, David Smith, has not logged on, so that will conclude this item as far as speakers are concerned. All right, and nobody, and nobody, excuse me, and nobody on the second floor, correct? correct. All right, we'll close. Ms. Maniscalco has moved it, and uh, Ms. Citra second, all in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? All right. Um, Mr. Vera, can you handle some for us? Item number two. Sure. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I move. Can you can you guys hear me? Yes, yes sir. Sorry. Um, I move a uh, ordinance being presented for first reading uh, consideration, an ordinance amending the imagined 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element to amend the neighborhood mixed use uh, 16 NMU. 16 neighborhood mixed use 24 NMU 24 and neighborhood mixed use 35 and 35 category to remove reference to vertical mixed use allowing all development to have FAR 1.5 providing the appeal of all on this concept providing providing an effective date. Second by Mr. Citro. Roll call. Dink Powder. Yes. Goods. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Maniscaco. Yes. Citro. Yes. Vieira. Yes. And Carlson. Motion carried unanimously with Carlson being absent of vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Okay, Jim, I, I can say if you have not been by, I was by the West River uh, Boulevard apartments yesterday. Uh, they look immaculate. Yeah, uh, they do. You, don't, you won't know who's living in those apartments. Whether it's low income, mixed income, because yeah. the apartments all look the same. 
the amenities in the apartment, they all have washer and dryer. There's no laundry in it. So uh, the floors uh, are no carpet. They're very nice. So I'm glad that the, our housing department would, would teach uh, Tampa Housing Authority did a great job on that project. Item number three. Good evening, Council. Jennifer Malone again. On um, item number three, I'm filling in for Danny Collins. So this is uh, TACPA 2106. So we're going to go over a couple parks in the next couple minutes. Uh, 2106 is Collins Park, 2107 is Temple Crest Park, and 2108 is Lawn Cemetery. And as you know, this is part of the ongoing initiative to publicly uh, to recognize the existing city of Tampa parks on the adopted future land use map. And these are all consistent with the plan. So 2106 is located in the South Tampa Planning District, Historic Hyde Park neighborhood, and the Hyde Park Urban Village. Here it is, kind of at the, kind of between West Southview Avenue and West Deckel Avenue. Um, I have some site pictures. It's a very small park. And the request is to go from Residential 10 to Recreational Open Space. This is going to remove any potential for dwelling units or non-residential square footage. And with that, we recommend consistency. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, you recognize. If Ms. Malone is willing to hear the next, did you plan on talking about three, four, and five at this at this point? Can you do that? Do you wish to do that? Because I'm prepared to do that if you'd like. Because the council, if you wish to just hear the presentations, you can close those public hearings. You could actually open the public hearings, three, four, and five to the public, to anybody to speak to those three items, and then we've done that before. You can then just read the ordinances and vote on them separately. That'll be fun. All right. So you're anyone here to speak on well, items three, well, four, we, and five? Well, we could do that. Why don't we just hear the reports on three, four, and five, and then we can open the floor. That's fine. Okay. All right. Good, Ms. Malone. Okay. So uh, the next one is 2107. This is Temple Crest Park in the University Planning District in the Temple Crest neighborhood. This one, since it was over the acreage threshold, was already transmitted to the Department of Economic Opportunity in June, and they had no comment. Uh, but just as a refresher, here it is. Um, most of it is recreational open space. There's just a, a little portion down on the south, which is residential 20, and then on the north, which, which is residential 10. And the proposal would be to take the entire site to recreational open space, and it's consistent. And then the next one is the Woodlawn Cemetery, Central Tampa Planning District, Tampa Heights neighborhood, and the Tampa Heights Urban Village. Again, this was very large, so it was um, over the acreage threshold. It was transmitted in June. Um, this is the portion that's owned by the City of Tampa. It's under the public semi-public so future land use now, but the code um, and, and the way that this process has worked, it, we're proposing the recreational open space future land use for the, the parcel that's under city ownership. And that's consistent as well. <laughs> okay, deference first, Mr. Miranda. Thank you for taking the oldest first. Um, let me just say that as far as I'm concerned, this is not the amount of emails that we got is enormous. And this is not related to that. Am I correct? That is correct, sir. That amendment has been continued. So I was trying to <laughs> I was, no, uh, that's that's that a private person's... sale going to another private sale, if whatever it is, I'm not going to get involved in that. But this is something to make it like it is forever. Right. The, the, the outlined parcels owned by the city, there's some other parcels, like the ones remaining in blue, are not on, on, under ownership by Thank the city. Thank you very much. I want to make um, that clear so nobody gets nervous. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any questions for Ms. Blum? I had a question. Um, you recognize it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jennifer, the, uh, the, the, looking at the map that's in front of us, the, the upper left corner is, is the showman's property, uh, two, two different parcels. Uh, the lower left corner is the church, which is also privately owned, private nonprofit. It's within the Woodlawn block, but it's privately owned, just like showman's. But what is that sliver? What's, what's that sliver coming down the other, the last little blue? It's the Jewish cemetery. The, it's owned by, I, I can't remember the, the ownership off the top of my head, but it's, well, it said, it's, 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 I've driven by many times. It says B'nai Israel. Yeah. 
but, That's it. Yes, sir. but yes. geographically, you might want to take a look at that between now and, and second reading, because geographically, it's my recollection that B'nai Israel uh, butts immediately up to Shomans up there in that corner where the, where the green is up at the top. I don't want to make a big right. deal about it tonight. But, but well, if we, I, if, we, we, we looked at this on a parcel level, and we're very careful. And I don't know if David Hay he has his camera on if he wants to chime in. But um, the way that the parcel ownership is, is on the property appraiser, if it's only this small strip, we would ab I'll absolutely take another look. And I will let David chime in on this. Yeah, you might want to actually drive by it and then try and figure it out. Um, because I, I drive... I cut, I cut through on my way home and, and go and go along Indiana there, so I'm I'm pretty familiar with it. Anyway, okay, that was my first question. My second question is in regard to the proposed uses for the recreation open space, and it's sort of a strange name for for the city cemetery is recreation, but I can't find it now on the staff report. But I saw it earlier, and it does. I don't recall that it specifically mentions cemetery as one of the uses. Am I wrong? That is most likely correct. I don't have it in front of me, but that's most likely correct. It's that the... Um, yeah, here it is. Here it, here it is. Range, range of allowable uses. Okay. Parks, recreational facilities, greenways, natural, managed and cultivated open space, golf courses and commercial recreation facilities with an emphasis on outdoor use are also allowed. But It'd kind of be nice, especially for for Woodlawn, if the if we had a name, you know, a, a specifically a named use there as some as cemetery. I yes, sir, yes, and we can always take a look at that. Um, I think it could probably fall under the managed and cultivated open spaces, and then the fact that it's also on the dedicated park list. We also did Woodlawn Cemetery in downtown, and we did Marty Colon Cemetery up on. Columbus as well, um, but if that's the pleasure of council, we can take a look at that. Well, I just noticed it today, so y'all take a look at it and let me know, but second reading. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Malone, you can continue. I think Mr. Oh, Chair. okay. That was actually all of them, all so right. my presentation is done. All right. Any more questions for Ms. Malone for three, four, and five? Nope. All right. Is there anybody from the public? There are no registered speakers for those speak items. Speak on three, four, or five. No registered speakers. All and right. downstairs? Anybody on second floor, Miss Debbie? Nobody down here. Thank, Thank you. you. Move it close. Move close. <laughs> Mr. Maniscalco has moved it. Nobody here but us chickens. Mr. Citro has seconded it. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. And we need to take each one individual. That's correct, Mr. Shelby? That's correct, sir. All right. Mr. Dean Felder, you think you're up? No, Mr. Carlson, I'm sorry, is up next. Yes, sir. Then we'll go Mr. Citro, then Mr. Dean Felder. Yes, I'd like to move um, file number TACPA 2106, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, ordinance amending the imagined 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 2105 West Eagle Avenue, otherwise known as Collins Park from residential 10 R10 to recreational open space ROS providing for appeal of all ordinances and conflict providing for severability providing effective date. Second. Mr. Uh, Maniscalco is seconded. Roll call. <coughs> Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Goods? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Cedro? Yes. Vieira? And Carlson? Yes. Motion carried with Vieira being absent at vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Ms. Debbie, do you need something? Yes, I have one person to speak on item number six. Okay, we, we haven't got to item number six yet, but yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Citro, I'm going to Yes, Mr. Chair, with, uh, with pleasure. File number TACPA 21-07. I move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan, future land use element, future land use map for the property generally located at 8116 North 37th Street, otherwise known as 
Temple Crest Park from Residential 10, R10, Residential 20, R20, and Recreational Open Space, ROS, to Recreational Open Space, ROS, providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. Second by Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call. Cedro? Yes. Vieira? Carlson? Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Goods? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Maniscalco? Yeah. Motion carried with Vieira being absent at both. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dinkfelder, uh, number five. Sure, Mr. Chairman, uh, in regard to file number TA, CPA 2108, I'll move the following ordinance presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan, future land use element, future land use map for the property generally located at 3412 North Ola Avenue, otherwise known as Woodlawn Cemetery, from public, semi-public, PSP, to recreation, open space, R slash OS. Providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. Mr. Maniscalco is second it. Roco. Carlson? Yes. Vieira? Citro? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Goods? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carry with Vieira being absent at both. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. All right. Item number six. Good evening, Jennifer Malone again. Item number six. Um, David, did you? Um, I just wanted clarification, if I may, on number three. I did not hear a vote, and I don't think Jennifer heard a vote on number three. Oh, that's the we? Yes, we had a vote. The maker was Carlson, second was Maniscalco, so we passed with VR being absent of vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. All right. I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, this is Tampa Comprehensive Plan Amendment 21-12. Uh, <laughs> it is Robles Park. It's located in the Central Tampa Planning District, the Tampa Heights Urban Village, and the Tampa Heights neighborhood. Here's an aerial of the subject site. It is south of East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and east of North Florida Avenue. As you know, there's a variety of commercial uses along North Florida Avenue. Um, there's this uh, a church to the south, and then we also have some single family detached to the south as well. And then the lake and it, to the south of the site is Robles Park, the, the park itself, <coughs> not the, the community. Uh, so the request before you is privately initiated. It is a small scale amendment under the new state, um, state acreage chain um, small scales are anything greater than anything less than 50 acres. Um, this is 30.03 acres from residential 35 to community mixed use 35. I do have some site pictures. Um, this is the subject site along East Lake Avenue. I have the subject site internally. This is the intersection of East Lake Avenue and North Avon Street faced north. And this is the intersection of East Lake Avenue and North Florida Avenue. The subject site was behind me when I took this picture. And this is a single family detached kind of across the street from the subject site on um, East Virginia and North Central Avenue. So this is the single family detached that is within the proximity of the, of the site. The adopted future land use is residential 35. To the north is residential 20, that's that lighter brown color. Um, further north is community mixed use 35, that's the pink. And the red is community commercial 35 on the east along at North Florida Avenue. So the community commercial 35 and the community mixed use 35 both allow for some commercial uses. Community commercial 35 is more intensive. The blue is the um, property owned by the church. That's a public, uh, semi-public future land use designation. The green to the south is Robles Park, the city park. And then there is some residential 10 in the area and that's the single family detached. And the proposal would take this to the community mixed use 35. And we already have that color um, to the east of the subject site. That pink is already present in the surrounding area. Um, this would increase the uh, potential of 
dwelling units, but that would be through the utilization of the floor area ratio option in the comprehensive plan. So the our residential 35 and community mixed use 35 are both calculated at 35 dwelling units an acre, or um, the applicant can utilize the floor area ratio to allow for um, that amount of, of non-residential or residential uses. So that number would increase from about 78,000 to um, 2.6 million square feet. Um, the com proposed community mixed use 35 designation would also allow consideration of commercial uses on the subject site. Um, so just a little history, I'm sure everyone is familiar with it, but this was um, developed in 1952 as a 432 acre project based section eight community. Um, the historically significant Zion Cemetery was discovered through ground penetrating radar in the northwestern portion of the site a couple of years ago. Um, and any preservation of the cemetery will be accomplished through the rezoning process. And I'm sure the applicant will touch on that in their presentation as well. Um, it is consistent with comprehensive plan objectives and policies. The comprehensive plan promotes a development pattern that's consistent with the compact city form strategy, um, which encourages mixed use infill within proximity to transit and employment center and employment services and direct the city to direct the target the greatest share of growth to urban villages. As I mentioned before, this is located in the Tampa Heights urban village. Um, we found that increasing the density is consistent with several objectives and policies which encourage new housing on underutilized land and promotes housing choice within proximity to those services. We would also note that the um, while the community mixed use 35 would allow for some commercial uses on the site, there are screening and buffering requirements in the land development code if residential is located adjacent to commercial uses. And so uh, with that, the Planning Commission did find this consistent with the plan, and I'm available for any questions, and I believe the applicant is here as well. Okay, Mr. Maniscalco, uh, sit <coughs> down, recognize, you recognize her. Do you know who lived here in 1962-63? My mother and my grandparents. Wow. When they came from <coughs> Cuba, they lived here in Robles Park, and then they moved to 48th Street, Highland Pines, a couple years after, District 5, the house is still there. But I uh, just want to throw that in there, but also, and this is because another item has been continued uh, tonight, but, you know, it seems that this, the city or the community, uh, because I saw Zion Cemetery mentioned, you know, seems to have a, a little bit of a reputation of paving over areas that, you know, they didn't know or whatever it was where there was a, a cemetery at one point. And here's a, an example of that. And that was, that was brought up. And of course you see that in the news. So that's it. Just want to throw that out there. Anyone else? I've always been curious and, and I know it's not a thousand percent relevant uh, to our land use decision tonight, but since Guido mentioned it, if, could you go back to one of those maps? I've always been curious exactly where, where the Zion was discovered. And Mr. Chairman, maybe you can, you can so help, right help, middle, help me with that. So I, right in the middle, right in the middle. She's going to put up. Or? She's going to put up a map. They're, they're showing Virginia Avenue at the top of this project, and they mentioned the northwest corner. Uh, my understanding, and I, I'm sure the applicant will touch on this, but my understanding is that it was in, yeah, the northwest corner, maybe south of the Virginia up Avenue. Those top two down. parcels, up those top here. two parcels up yeah, there? Up in here. Mm -hmm. There's Florida, there's Virginia. So that middle portion in here, and then I think where Gunsmark's place is, I believe. The brown out there? Yeah, I think that's it right there. Those two, those sections over there. So in that, re in that regard, you know, changing the, f the future land use map to a CMU 35, do we have any hesitations? Um, why is it we're not reserving the, that upper northwest corner for the, the, the recreation open space cemetery type area? I mean, I, I'm confident that the the Housing Authority is not going to do anything bad, but just from a consistency perspective, I'm just wondering why we don't uh, 
why we don't do use that ROS uh, designation up in that top corner where we know there are graves. And that's not necessarily a question for you, Jen. Um, if you want to defer that, okay. if you want to defer that to the applicants, uh, <laughs> I see the illustrious Mr. Smith there uh, on the on the screen. So. I will defer that to the applicants. Thank you, Councilman. All right. All right. We'll hear from the applicant now. Microphone, David. Unmute me that time. Here we go. David Smith, 401 East Jackson Street, 33601, Suite 2100, a planner with Stearns Weaver Miller representing the applicant. Um, there's a really good staff report, and I think I get to the, the point of the matter. This is an opportunity for a comp plan amendment to facilitate the redevelopment similar to what's happening in West River and that has already happened in other um, housing authority projects uh, to come in with a mixed use um, residential development. Uh, that will provide many more affordable housing units. Uh, we have the density on the particular site, but due to locational criteria, it did not facilitate a well-planned mixed-use community, and that is the basic reason for the CMU 35 on the property. We see this as a, um, a springboard uh, catalytic project for the area. Um, uh, hopefully, as it just redevelops, uh, the Florida corridor uh, with a lot of those automobile CI uses um, or start to transition into uh, more neighborhood serving uses as opposed to automotive based uses. Um, with respect to the Zion Cemetery, um, part of the Zion Cemetery discovery has been on the Tampa Housing Authority property, but also have been off site, um, outside what we're proposing for the CMU 35 and is in private ownership. Um, so at this time for our project, the inclusion of the property for density purposes allows us to utilize that land to achieve densities, to maximize the benefit to um, the affordable housing project and also the mixed use project, and then also facilitate being able to fund preservation efforts for the Zion uh, Cemetery. Uh, part of the project includes a museum, a memorial for the Zion, and uh, expansion to uh, protect that in working with adjacent property owners whose property is affected by uh, the Zion discovery. Um, so I think, you know, looking at it from a land use perspective, I think maybe it's premature at this time to designate it as such uh, for the purposes of the moving the project forward, but it may be something once uh, the preservation effort is underway, they're able to get the museum in place, uh, acquire some of that private land, um, that may be the appropriate land use to make sure that it's preserved in perpetuity. Uh, it will also be part of a rezoning activity, at least in the property we control, um, moving forward with a redevelopment uh, of Robles Park. Uh, there are uh, other members of the development team uh, that are on the line and signed up for the applicant um, that, dealt, or dealing, that dealt with the master plan and more specific, uh, but that's the, the general response to your question, and I hope that's, uh, that helps. If, if not, there will be others that can answer more specifically your question. Any questions for the gentleman? So, Mr. Smith, um, we've got approximately 30 acres total um, on, under the Housing Authority control. What, what percentage or how many acres or less than an acre or whatever are we talking about for Zion that's within the Housing Authority property? Um. Dave Beltasso, as you can see on the screen over my right hand shoulder with uh, Baker Burroughs Architects, it's, it's about an acre um, that's actually within the boundary of the property. Um, and there's uh, likely more of it outside on other private properties. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not worried about outside tonight. Yeah. Because that's not, that's not in front of us. Um, yeah. So, so that is, that is, makes a significant difference in terms of your, your densities and, and, and out, I mean, I mean, clearly we all know you're not going to be building on top of Zion, but you need that for your, for your density calculations and everything to do what you're going to do elsewhere. Well, since uh, you know, part of the master plan effort is to preserve Zion, the development risk to the property in, in our uh, moving forward, it isn't really a reality. It's, it's going to be preserved. We think that 
putting recreation open space on a piece of the property now before we go through the, the final development plans and try to incorporate a, a master plan that includes those other properties adjacent to us uh, would be premature. Well, per perhaps I'd feel more comfortable if I had your and your client's assurance that when, <laughs> when all, all is said and done, uh, that the housing authority will circle back and, and do a comp plan amendment for that sacred area. Um, and whether, you know, obviously that might be another year, two, three down the road. But just for consistency's sake, um, you know, we, we just were over at, at Woodlawn and, and that's the reason we did it at Woodlawn. That's the reason we did it downtown, et cetera, recreation open space. So I, sure. I'm, I'm okay with it tonight. I understand where you're coming from tonight, but, but uh, perhaps by second reading, you can give us assurances the Housing Authority will come back and, and do a comp plan amendment for the small little Zion parcel. And there's Ms. Susan uh, Johnson Velez raising her hand. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Have you recognized? Give me the recognition. Thank you, sir. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department. Um, Mr. Dinkfelder, I. I understand your your comments but i would be concerned and would caution council against um imposing any type of conditions on the comprehensive plan amendment um, if you have some concerns then um per, perhaps there would be consideration of taking that land out but um it, it would be problematic to condition your uh, decision on future actions by the applicant again it's a, a policy decision whether or not to apply the requested plan category to the parcel that is um, before you this evening. Maybe there's a difference between condition or assurance. I'm sorry. I said maybe there's a difference between a condition or just a verbal assurance, uh, some sort of moral moral uh, assurance or or whatever. And Mr. Dinkfeld, excuse me. We can, have we can you, rely on that. Have you seen the... Uh, RoboSpot plan yet? Have you seen this? No, I haven't seen it. And I trust, I trust it's going to be done. I trust it's all wonderful. I'm just saying from a consistency perspective, we've just spent a year going through all of our parks to make sure they're in recreation open space. We've got three cemeteries to make sure they're in recreation open space. And we do that for good reason. So, so here's another opportunity. I'm not trying to hold this one up tonight. And Susan, I'm not trying to, you know, to make them condition their approval. All I'm asking is perhaps they can give us some verbal assurance a couple of weeks from now to say, by the way, we hear you, and we're glad to do that down the road. They, uh, just if I, I might, I think we'll speak with the housing authority. I mean, I, I think the it will be clear when the PD amendment comes through um, with the property that it will be preserved. And then at that point in time, uh, when we actually have it on paper for everybody to see the boundaries and what's involved, um, that that may be a great time for us to formally uh, demonstrate that, yes, we're going to follow through with uh, an amendment to put that in a, an open space category. But uh, between now and, and second reading, I'll discuss that with the Tampa Housing Authority and uh, get back to you. Yeah, either, either that or a deed restriction or something like that. That's fine. I did, see, I did see the drawings of it where they mapped out the cemetery area over there. It looks real nice how they're going to monument it over there. So hopefully they can concur with that. Any, anyone else for uh, Jennifer had her hand up. Ms. Malone, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to state for the record um, that the recreation open space has been applied to cemeteries that are on the city's dedicated park list. Um, and that are in ownership by the city. So perhaps there would be um, some, a method and we further discuss how that, if, if recreation open space would be applied to as the city cemetery, how that would be uh, So I just wanted to state that for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for the applicant? All right. Is there anyone here on the second floor to speak on this item? I remember six. I believe so. Right, I believe the there was person. I saw Miss Debbie earlier said it was one person. Is that person still there, Miss Debbie? Yes, he's coming. All right. Yeah. 
Good evening, Council. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. State your name for us. William Sessions, 512 East Chain Street. I'm in support of the uh, amendment change for this uh, location. Uh, there's many reasons why um, I'm in support of it. It's long overdue. I was also raised in Robles Park as a young man back in the 80s. So I moved back to the area because I like the area. I'm back in Tempe. It's now that I bought my own house in the area. So I'm very much aware of the area and I'm very much aware of what it has and what it has gone through. And also, to be real quick, it's just that there's so much that's going on now that consists along Central Avenue, and I think that I've spoken to Mr. Goose about that situation with the people standing out along the street doing this and that. We need to make, have a change over there. It's time for a change over there because the change is well needed, and I think it will bring up the community, and I believe it will bring back people who want to work in the community and do better for the community. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. I have seen some of the renditions of the Housing Authority's plan and how they're going to look at Central Avenue. They've already tried to acquire properties along Central to, to do just what you're talking about. I think it will be a great change for that area. Anyone else on the second floor, Ms. Debbie? No, that's all. Anyone register for this item? Anyone register for this item? Uh, yes, we have one registered speaker. All right, we'll hear the speaker. Yeah. We have Mr. Michael Randolph. Um, the only thing is he does not have video capability. So being that this is a non-quasi item, if I'm correct, Shelby, um, Attorney Shelby, is he okay to speak? I would think so, yes. All right. All right, Mr. Randolph, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. First, I want to start off by thanking the city planning and county planning because I had some technical difficulties in order to get on. Both of those entities were definitely helpful for me getting on this particular platform. I do live on Virginia and Moore Avenue. The cemetery in question is right down the street from me. The cemetery and what's going to happen to the cemetery is part of the Rovers Park master plan. That's a master plan that has been put together. And part of their strategy is looking at what happened to that service cemetery. And there was a lot of meetings with the community to make a decision on that. So related to that cemetery, I'm glad you, you brought that up. But housing authority is very good in inclusion folks to determine what happens on that property. Let's talk about present day Rovers Park. They have multi multi program services there, which is good. But there's crime. Feel safe, build separating, and there's a lack of technology. Meaning that if you want to put a hotspot up for people to connect to the internet, you can't do that because the buildings are too old. Let's go to future day. They're going to have multi-service program again. Crime is going to be reduced. They're going to be technologically connected. They're going to. It's going to have an impact on improvement on a larger Tampa Heights area. It's going to increase affordable housing. It's going to increase economic development in the community. And because of the strategy they're using, it's going to decrease the economic divide when it comes to wealth in the community because they are going to have programs goes towards teaching residents how they own their own business. So at the end of the day, I'm in total support of this plan. If you live here in Rose Park, you know the condition we live under. Nobody should live under these conditions. The current proposal, and everybody knows Housing Authority is good at what they do. The final product is going to be just like if it was doing it in South Tampa. That's the quality they put to their work. So having said that, and I didn't mean to take too much time, I'm in total in agreement with that. Actually, I wish they duplicated throughout the city. I know they're doing an awesome job in West Tampa, but I wish it was done throughout the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else registered? That was the only rush to speakers for this item. Uh, Mr. Calhoun closed. Mr. Miranda seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Mr. Miranda, can you take on number six, please? Thank you. Item number six, file number TACPA 21-12. Move an order to be presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance amending the image 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan, future land use element, future land use map for the property generally located at 3814 North Central Avenue. 
from residential R, R35 to mixed use, community mixed use, 35, CMU 35, providing for repeal of all ordinance and conflict, providing severability, providing an effective date. Second. Say, Mr. Citro, roll call, please. Citro? Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Goods? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Maniscaco? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Carlson? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. All right. Item number seven was taken care of earlier. Item number eight. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. You recognize? I'm Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Uh, it's Council's <coughs> pleasure, but the next four items, all taken together, are all uh, uh, park issues, if I'm not mistaken. And um, if it's Council's pleasure, you can do what we we could do what we did the last time and hear all the, pre the full presentation. My understanding from Ms. Mercer is there's nobody left on two. Are there any other registrants for tonight on these parks, for instance? Or anybody else for that matter? We have registered speakers for item number 14. 14, okay, then that's not. So if you wish to take uh, them together and hear the presentation, you can hear them separately, your pleasure. But it could move oh, quickly. hear them all together. Item number eight, it'd be nine, 10, 11. Yes. All right, we'll take them all together, it's fine. And excuse me, and also register speaker for item number 10. Okay. Okay, uh, Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. I will start with item number eight, which was uh, TACPA 2115. Here's a little roadmap of where we're going today. Davis Island Apex Park, Kid Ma Mason Center. Uh, I'm just gonna say Friendship Park for 2117. I don't, I don't want to, to mispronounce that. And then Port Tampa Park for 2118. Um, as you know, these are publicly initiated by council to recognize existing city of Tampa parks. These are all on the dedicated park list. And they're consistent with the plan, promoting recreation and open space opportunities. So first we have Davis Islands Apex Park, Central Tampa Planning District, Davis Islands Neighborhood, and the Davis Islands Urban Village. Here it is along Davis Boulevard. I have some subject site pictures. It's pretty small. And the adopted future land use is residential 35 and residential 10. And this would take it to that recreational open space land use. Again, it would remove any potential for dwelling units or non-residential square footage. And with that, it's consistent. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Uh, 2116 is the Kid Mason Community Center in the Central Tampa Planning District in the da Tampa Downtown Partnership neighborhood. Um, it's right across from Oak Lawn Cemetery on North Jefferson Street and North Orange Avenue, right in downtown. I have some pictures of the site. Uh, the future land use is Central Business District, and this request would take this to the recreational open space. The cemetery, um, Oaklawn Cemetery, to the west was uh, done through the same <coughs> process for the recreational open space. So again, that would remove any potential for residential or non-residential on the site. However, in the Central Business District, there's no limit, but it's still going to remove that potential, and it is consistent. The next one is 2117, the Friendship Park in the South Tampa Planning District in the Virginia Park neighborhood. It's at South Lois Avenue and West Bay to Bay Boulevard. And then I have some subject site pictures. This is the surrounding area. The park's on the right side of your screen. And future land use is residential 10. This request would go to recreational open space. Again, that removes any potential for dwelling units or non-residential on the subject site, and is consistent. And last but not least, we have the park, Port Tampa Park in the Central Tampa Planning District in the Port Tampa City neighborhood. Here it is at um, West McCoy Street, east of West Shore Boulevard. I have some subject site pictures of the amenities in this park. And most of this is already recreational open space, but a portion of it, a very small portion, is residential 10. So this will just clean up the maps and the entire park is recreational open space. And it's gonna remove um, any potential for that one dwelling unit or some square, non-residential square footage. And that's consistent as well. I'm available to answer any questions. And thank you so much, Council. All right. 
Mr. Dean Foley, you recognize. Mr. Maniscalco. Yes. Guess who learned how to play four square in friendship? Marcelino Cello Huerta Junior Park. John Dingfelder. There you go. And guess what else in that park? It's no longer there as of recently, but it's one of the last parks that had stamped on the sidewalk Nick Nucio, County Commissioner. And he would stamp, you know, benches and and all that stuff. But they uh, they redid the park recently, so they tore out that part right oh. where the basketball courts were. So. <coughs> wow. Well, History lesson do today. we have? I'm glad to see where Kid Mason is. You always talk about Kid Mason. I had no idea where it was. That's, that's why. I, that's why I want it fixed up. You yeah. see how it looks? Yeah. <laughs> that's a. That's pretty small. Really. Well, uh, do we have anybody to speak on any of these items, eight through eleven? Nobody on two. There's somebody on number ten. Uh, I believe. We have somebody on number ten uh, that are re registered. Yes, someone register, uh, Michael Junko. All right. Good evening, Chair. Michael Junkal did register. However, he is not logged on at this time. All right. Move close. Second. All right, so move, so move. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed, motion carried. Mr. Vieira, are you can handle number eight for us, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, I move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tamper Comprehensive Plan Feature land use element, feature land use map for the property located at 106 East Davis Boulevard, otherwise known as Davis Island Apex, or Davis Island Apex Park and Residential 35, R35 and Residential 10R10, to recreation open space R slash OS, providing for repeal of all ordinances and conflicts, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second by Mr. Dingfelder, roll call. Dingfelder? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Money Skakel? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Mr. Maniscalco, tap on number nine for us. Yes, sir. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Element, Future Land Use Map for the property located at 1101 North Jefferson Street, otherwise known as Kid Mason Center, from sec Central Business District CBD to Recreation Open Space ROS, providing for repeal of all ordinances and conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. Second by Mr. Miranda. Roll call. Carlson. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Cedro. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Mr. Carlson, number 10, please. Yes, sir. I'd like to move um, file number TACPA 2117, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 4124 West Beta Bay Boulevard, otherwise known as Marcelino um, Cello Huerta, Huerta uh, Junior Friendship Park from residential mm -hmm. 10 R10 to uh, re uh, recreational open space ROS providing for repeal of all ordinances and conflict Sorry. providing for severability providing effective date. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Citro. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Dinkfelder. Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. Miranda, did you know Werther? Yes, I did. He lived uh, right there in Ybor City on uh, just the other side of 24th. I believe the street was called Owens. Yes, and uh, he was a great coach, a great guy, and um, took time to speak to all the kids. He really, he really helped a lot of people along. And one of the leading coaches here at University of uh, Tampa. Hillsborough High School's field name. Yep. University of Florida. You play football, University of Florida, yeah. Were you involved in naming it after him? No, I was a little league. I was <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I was on council. We did name that park after after him. And I think his son, his son uh, pushed real hard for that. In fact, uh, he was good friends with John Eckcock, another coach. John went to Auburn. He went to Florida. They had a big meeting here. And Chilo bought an alligator. So I come to see me. He wanted to borrow the two tigers we had at the Sea Wolf. 
I told them the only way you can do that, you got to muzzle them, and you got to have two people on each side of the of the, of the tigers. And he did. He went through the whole thing with the two tigers. With Chelsea saw that alligator, he gave up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number eleven. You can do that then. You can't do it now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move an ordinance for uh, being presented for first reading and consideration. An ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Element Future Land Use Map for the property located at 4702 West McCoy Street, otherwise known as Port Tampa Park, from Residential 10 R10, Residential Excuse me, Recreational Open Space ROS, Recreational Open Space ROS. Providing for, for appeal of all ordinances and conflicts, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Say Mr. Miranda, roll call. Vieira? Yes. Citra? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 21st at 9.30 a.m. All right, gentlemen, last item of the night. Good time. Uh, two, no, 14. Item number 14. Good evening, council members. David Hay with your planning commission staff. If I could share my screen, please. Uh, this, this next amendment, your last amendment for the evening is the transmittal uh, hearing uh, regarding comprehensive plan text amendment 2111. This is in regards to floor area ratio, the utilization of, excuse me, the utilization of floor area ratio for residential in the community mixed use 35, the community commercial 35, and the urban mixed use 60 future land use categories. <laughs> A little background about the request on April 1st of this year. Uh, Tampa City Council did direct city staff to review the use of floor area ratio in determining maximum development potential for single use structures. This ability to utilize FAR within the mixed use categories has been an option within the comprehensive plan since at least the 1998 comprehensive plan. The purpose as stated in that 1998 plan was quote, this concept permits residential uses to be competitive with commercial and or office uses, unquote. After a stakeholder meeting was held on May 25th, city uh, staff revised the original language based on that um, now uh, amended language. Another stakeholder meeting was uh, hosted by the Planning Commission and held on August 3rd. Uh, now to go through the proposed changes uh, for reference, the proposed uh, language is provided uh, within your packet. Uh, the most significant change is the removal of utilizing floor area ratio in determining maximum residential density for single use structures in the South Tampa and New Tampa planning districts. Uh, you can see on the screen, we have the city's uh, vision map. Um, we, I know we sh see this a lot. It's, we show it a lot during our zoning hearings. Uh, this is the South Tampa Planning District. It's basically uh, south of Kennedy, and then it kind of dips down, I believe that's Swan, and goes south of um, Hyde Park. Uh, so this is all South Tampa. And then the new Tampa is uh, north of the university uh, up to the Pasco line, all the property uh, within that uh, bright pink. Based on the district characteristics, the comprehensive plan have viewed these uh, two districts as providing, quote, limited growth opportunities, unquote. There are also references in the comp plan calling these two areas, quote, areas of stability, unquote. This, uh, the comp plan really envisions the three core districts, Central, West Shore, and University, as having the most growth opportunities uh, within the city of Tampa. Um, other changes within the land use descriptions include the removal of the statement, whichever calculation is more beneficial to the development, and the addition of, quote, determina sites, unquote, to clarify an existing sentence. And then finally, the word consistent is removed out of the land use description and replaced with compatible. 
Uh, the word consistent is not defined in the comprehensive plan. The definition of, of compatible is defined and is, is uh, as follows, quote, the characteristics of different uses or activities or design which allow them to be located near or adjacent to each other in harmony. Some elements affecting compatibility include the following, height, scale, mass and bulk of structures, pedestrian or vehicular traffic, circulation, access and parking impacts, landscaping, lighting, noise, odor and architecture. Compatibility does not mean the same as, rather it refers to the sensitivity of development proposals in maintaining the character of existing development. Uh, your planning commission has reviewed the proposed request and has identified some key aspects of the proposed change. The proposed language continues to promote a mixture of uses within the two planning districts. The majority of properties designated one of the three mixed use flu categories are located along or within close proximity to major corridors. Vertical mixed use structures within the two planning districts will continue to be eligible to use FAR to determine overall residential unit count. Uh, second, since under the proposed language, single use residential developments would no longer be able to utilize FAR in calculating residential density, it is uh, the Planning Commission's finding that there will be an overall reduction in residential units over what can currently be considered. Though overall unit count may be reduced, the size and cost of each unit may increase. And uh, thirdly, the language also clarifies that developments must be compatible, which is defined again in the comprehensive plan. The proposed language is found to provide greater protection for single family detached residential by potentially reducing building scale and massing based on that uh, compatible the addition of compatible into the um, land use category. Uh, as always, we send this out to our partner agencies. There were no uh, ob objections from any of the reviewing agencies. Uh, it should also be noted that a large number of citizen comments uh, were received uh, to the Planning Commission uh, regarding this request and can be accessed through the link that's included uh, within your packet. Uh, it was, I think, over 100. Uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed the comprehensive plan and found that the proposed language to amend the Urban Mixed Use 60, the Community Commercial 35, and the Community Mixed Use 35 future land use categories to remove the option uh, or referred to as the FAR option for single-use residential projects in the South and New Tampa planning districts consistent with the adopted policy guidance within the comprehensive plan. Your planning commission found three main areas of consistency. Adopted uh, comprehensive plan policies promote the preservation of neighborhood character. Policies also promote design sensitivity when developing adjacent to established single-family detached residential neighborhoods. The proposal clarifies the overall intent of the districts by providing that new development must be compatible with existing development. Also, overall scale and massing may be reduced, which is one aspect of many regarding overall neighborhood character. Your Planning Commission also found the request consistent with the city's overall growth strategy, described as uh, the compact city form. These policies encourage uh, the city to focus high density housing in areas with access to transit and employment. Though some transit is provided in areas of South Tampa, there is no local transit service currently provided along West Shore Boulevard, except in Port Tampa City or along Gandhi Boulevard. These two corridors provide for a large percentage of the three land use categories found within the South Tampa Planning District. There is also no local transit service within the whole of the new Tampa Planning District. The majority of transit and employment in the city of Tampa are found within the Central, West Shore, and University Planning Districts. Both land use policies 9.4.1 and 9.6.2 encourage high-density multifamily residential development within areas with transit and employment availability. These policies also encourage multifamily development around recognized urban villages or business centers, which are all located uh, within the Central Tampa, West Shore, and University Planning District. 
Based on these facts, Planning Commission found that the proposed language is consistent with the city's growth management strategy. So based on that, the recommendation uh, from the Planning Commission to you all this evening is to find the proposed text amendment consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan. That concludes my presentation. I believe Stephen Benson with the City of Tampa is uh, also online. Would like to give a brief presentation and both of us will be available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Hay? All right, so we'll hear from Mr. Benson. Thank you, Council. I'd like to request to share my screen, please. Good evening, uh, Stephen Benson with your city planning department. I do have a, a brief presentation on this item. This amendment was initiated by Tampa City Council earlier this year. It relates to a specific provision in the comprehensive plan, which uh, we refer to as the FAR option. Council requested staff to review this provision for potential modifications and to process a comprehensive plan amendment to ensure that further use of this option is in line with its intent, as well as the goals, objectives, and policies in the plan. First, I'm going to speak to the timeline and the process for this amendment. Um, the, uh, the second, we'll look at the final proposed amendment language, and then I'll provide a summary of the policy implications, and then touch on the next steps. This amendment was initiated by Council Resolution 21273 on April 1st. Planning Commission staff held an informational meeting on May 25th for stakeholders. During the month of July, staff worked uh, together to revise the amendment language and then held another informational meeting on August 3rd. The Planning Commission found this amendment consistent with the comp plan on September uh, 14th. The two virtual meetings were held, as I mentioned, in May and in August, and those recordings are posted uh, available on the Planning Commission's website. And the amendment uh, was refined based upon the feedback that we received at these two sessions. So the language presented on your screen is the section of the comp plan that we refer to as the FAR option on the far left. Uh, residential development, as you know, is regulated by density, so dwelling units per acre, and non-residential development is regulated by floor area ratio. Mixed use projects, however, are typically required to meet both of these thresholds. But to help direct further growth into the mixed use corridors of the city, uh, this option, the FAR option, allows for projects that are in mixed use areas to use only the FAR rather than uh, the maximum density to determine how many housing units may be provided. This means that a project may provide more units than what would normally be considered allowable without this provision. This option applies to the three mixed use land use categories that you see at the top of the screen, urban mixed use 60, community commercial 35, and community, and, uh, community mixed use 35 categories. Although the FAR option provision is only applicable to mixed use plan categories, single use projects are currently allowed to use the option as long as they fall in these areas. The language presented on April 1st and transmitted by council uh, recognized this distinction and uh, sought to limit this option to projects that uh, were not single use. And the revised language based upon the stakeholder uh, meetings uh, sought to further uh, limit this to the uh, New Tampa Planning District as well as the South Tampa Planning District, as well as the uh, uh, modifications that were presented by uh, Mr. Hay uh, previously. So the map on the screen shows the distribution of parcels affected uh, with one of the three future land use designations that we're discussing right now. These lands are allowed to use this FAR option to determine their density uh, potential for projects. Uh, currently, uh, these lanes are organized, as you can see, in a linear fashion along and adjacent to the arterial and collector street system, generally comprising what is referred to in the comprehensive plan uh, collectively as our mixed-use corridors. Uh, as was mentioned, the comp plan divides the city up into five planning districts. Uh, the plan includes language that describes the specific visions for each of these districts and how they are intended to grow and change in the future. The West Shore District is shown in purple. Uh, it, of course, includes the West Shore Business District, Tampa International Airport, two major shopping malls, and the Drew Park Community Redevelopment Area. The South Tampa Planning District is on the map in light blue. The Central District is shown in green, and it, of course, includes the seven CRAs, 
uh, as well as all of the urban villages, the central business district, and Port Tampa Bay. And then the university district, which is the third growth district, is shown in orange, and it includes the innovation district, the USF Tampa campus, and it constitutes the third major employment center of the city. The new Tampa planning district is shown in the hot pink color at the top. The comprehensive plan establishes unique visions for the new Tampa Planning District and the South Tampa Planning District. Uh, those excerpts are shown on your screen. And these are based upon uh, what the plan refers to as limited growth opportunities in these areas. The visions for the South Tampa and New Tampa Planning Districts are characterized by uh, three main principles. The first is maintaining neighborhood stability. The second is fostering compatible infill. And the third is achieving a more sustainable mix of uses. And the research that we performed, um, you can see this slide displays the residential growth that has occurred in the city over the past 10 years. The uh, most recent 10 years of growth is broken into five-year increments. The 2010 residential units are shown in gray. And the growth that occurred from 2010 to 2015, that increase is shown in dark blue. And the growth that occurred uh, from 2015 to 2020 is shown in red. The two districts that have seen the highest residential growth in that period are the new Tampa Planning District and the South Tampa Planning District. This trend is not in line with uh, the comprehensive plan's vision for growth, uh, which is supposed to be limited in these two districts. Looking at the new Tampa trend, it appears that the rate of growth, uh, residential growth is decreasing uh, since the growth from 2010 to 2015 was significantly more than the growth from 2015 to 2020. So the, the, the red, uh, is smaller than the blue. We see the growth is actually decreasing. Whereas in the South Tampa district, the opposite is true. The, the red, the growth in the last five years, is more than the growth that occurred in the five years prior. So where is the South Tampa planning district? Uh, as is shown on your screen, it's the area that's south of Kennedy, west of Himes, south of Swan Avenue, and west of Howard Avenue uh, that uh, comprises the Interbay Peninsula. And the new Tampa Planning District is described generally as uh, the area north of Fletcher and east of 46th Street. It includes uh, most of Tampa Palms as well as uh, the Hidden River development. It does not include the, the Claw Golf Course and the adjacent undeveloped USF lands or Lettuce Lake Park, which are part of the University Planning District. And just a final summary uh, of what the actual amendment does, uh, the ability to use the FAR option to determine Density for single-use multifamily residential projects would no longer be allowed on parcels that meet both of these criteria. The first is uh, CMU, CC, and UMU future land use categories, and the second is that they also must be located within the South Tampa Planning District and the New Tampa Planning District. No parcels within the Central Tampa District, West Shore District, or the University District will be affected by this amendment, and no mixed-use projects anywhere in the city will be affected by this amendment. This map displays the parcels within the South Tampa district that would be affected. Uh, you can see they're generally located along portions of Dale Mabry Highway, Henderson Boulevard, West Shore Boulevard, Yandy Boulevard, Manhattan Avenue, McDill Avenue, and Beta Bay. And then in the New Tampa district, uh, the areas that are affected are shown in red. Uh, there is just uh, one of those applicable categories in the New Tampa district and that's generally located around I-75 and Bruce B. Down Interchange. As was mentioned, uh, there are also a couple of changes that were being proposed, swapping out the term uh, consistent with compatible, uh, which is defined uh, already in the comprehensive plan. And the next steps uh, with favorable action this evening would be to transmit this to the Department of Economic Opportunity for review, and then come back to you for a review and adoption. And this concludes my presentation, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Dean Philly, recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not sure who to direct this to. Maybe you, Stephen. Um, I've had a beef for at least two plus years, and David's well familiar with it. That's why I'm throwing this at you, Stephen, um, about how we define mixed use. 
and what our threshold is for mixed use. And I was hoping that when we went through all of this, you know, six month, eight month, 12 month exercise to get to this point in regard to this plan amendment, which is a positive plan amendment, but it still has a gaping loophole that we, that in my opinion, and I'll answer my own question, in my opinion, we don't seem to have a, a definition of what is mixed use. We don't have a threshold. The example, gentlemen, as you may remember, when we, when we all first started this go round in 2019, was down at the corner of McDill and uh, Gandy, and they had a project, and they called it mixed use, but it had like 1% of the whole project was commercial and the other 99% was, uh, was residential. And yet, they were allowed to call it mixed use and they were allowed to use the bonus criteria associated with mixed use. Is that gaping hole still there and, wh and what are we doing about it? Steven Benson. Yes, I, uh, I do believe that the Planning Commission staff has been working on uh, some research um, that will be uh, is forthcoming uh, to be presented to you. Uh, my, my understanding thus far is um, there, we, we have yet to discover a, a simple solution to, to that, um, that issue that you've identified. Um, we, do, we do acknowledge it and we do believe that it's something that can be addressed um, as we work to update the comprehensive plan uh, in partnership with the Planning Commission next year. Well, I think we're, I think we're just dragging our feet on this. Not necessarily intentionally. I don't believe in it. I don't believe that there's evil lurking within the city in the planning commission. But I think we're dragging our feet on it. I think that it's really dangerous to drag our feet on it because we we go to all the effort of doing this and saying no more f you know no more use of this and and in these mixed use categories et cetera et cetera. For, for monolithic, uh, prod, you know, single single use multifamily projects, and all they have to do is add one percent or less, ten square feet of, of of commercial, and they can call themselves mixed use, and we can't stop them. So while we perfect this, David Hay, I'll throw it to you now. While we perfect, you know, come up with the perfect answer. You can have project after project after project slip through the cracks. Am I am I crazy here? Just just slap me if I am. Get closer. <laughs> I'm only joking with you, sir. I would never slap you, uh, Councilman. The uh, the um, we we hear you about the mixed use. We are conducting research, um, a best practice on on what the best way how to handle that, whether it um, is appropriate to put it in the comprehensive plan, if that's something that should be more in the land development code. Um, I will also remind you, yes, they are eligible to apply, but remember, even if they had 10 square feet, it is within the purview of council that that does, can be a decision of council whether that mixed use meets the intent of the uh, the policy. I don't think we've had any that just had 10 feet. I will say there were some that had some smaller areas of commercial uses and um, as I know, recall that real, one as I recall that one at McDill and, and Gandy was like uh, less than a thousand square feet. It was and it and it really amounted to like one percent of the whole project. It was it was the classic it was the classic loophole you know a classic uh, op you know where the developer was trying to crawl through that loophole and here's oh. the pro here's the problem with saying what you're saying david you're saying you're saying council can always deny it okay but guess what legal turns around with all due respect miss johnson velez watching this but legal turns around and says well there's not really language there that defines what mixed use is so you better find something else to deny it on Okay, because because if we're not defining it, then why shouldn't they crawl through that loophole? Anyway, I'm off my soapbox. I think we need to speed it up, and we need to and we need to close that loophole. Otherwise, what we're doing here tonight is a wonderful exercise, but it but it's meaningless for any half intelligent developer out there, and they're all at least half intelligent. 
Well, Councilman, just one other point I'd like to make. You know, in our research that we're continuing to do and should uh, present to city staff shortly, um, you know, we really need to be careful because our mixed use, our, our, there, there are mixed use designations that are not um, on main roads. There's mixed use uh, on dead end roads. And is it appropriate and what is the best mechanism to separate those areas that may not be conducive for actual uh, vertical mixed use on each site, but look more at what is the what is the mixture of mixed use throughout a corridor or an area? Um, and that's what we're trying to wrap our uh, heads around. Well, that worries me a little bit too, because you're going to say, "Oh, this guy doesn't have to do it," because we're going to we're going to rely on the next guy to do it down the street. Well, uh, you know, uh, it is it's it is a planning. Um, mechanism really that you, you know uh, i don't think we will get to a point where every building proposed in a mixed use category could be required to have a, a mixture of uses the, the land use categories have always been described as we look at area of mixture of uses that you can have residential next to commercial that they don't it, it won't just be a solely residential neighborhood that you can have options some of that previous councils, previous planning commission recommendations were more market driven and that um, it, it, as always, it's always good to go back and relook at things and see whether the tools in our toolbox that worked previously are still working. And um, we think we'll have some um, recommendations back to you shortly. Okay. Well, we've, we've had a long day and you probably have too, so I won't belabor it, but I'm at the end of the night, I'm going to make a motion to, to light a little fire under everybody on this issue and, and get, get something going. Mr. Citros. No, Mr. Uh, no, Mr. Right. Mr. Manos first. Mr. Dick Miller and, and all of us, you know, times are changing. Things are different. I remember not too many years ago from Thanksgiving to December 25th was the Christmas season. And they used to have after sale Christmas because they had something left over. Now, don't take it from me. I see some ads in the TV and everything else. Go get your Christmas toys today because you won't have any for Christmas. The shipping problem, this problem, look at the cars. You can't find a chip that was invented in America and made in China for less cost, and China can't keep up with the production, so therefore you can't buy a car. So everything is changing. Look at Publix, Kroger, Winn-Dixie, Fresco, uh, Walmart. I want you to stay home, they're going to deliver to you. Yet on the other side, the doctors are telling you, go walk at the mall. And the mall's telling you, we're going to deliver your food. You don't have to. You could diabetes die at home. <laughs> so that's what they want. I mean, you look at you look at the mixed signals that this world is sending. I don't know how we're still alive. And, and that's how it is. Uh, you go to a ball game, I bought a couple of tickets the other day, six, four tickets. And they charged me so much, and they charged me $28 convenience fee. Convenience fee for who? <laughs> <laughs> it was part of the, tell me it's $15 a ticket more, and I'm glad to pay it. But it's changing. <laughs> Things are changing. So, and, and, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I, I think Mr. Hayes said it earlier at the last, the last couple of sentences, you said the industry is changing. It's changing because what we grew up with, knowing what we saw even in downtown, Remember when you said, when I was in the housing project, they were taking me downtown, I thought it was for an excursion way out there. My mother, the first time I thought I was going to Tampa Theater, she gave me a sweater so I didn't catch a cold because it was air conditioning. I can tell you all kinds of things. So these are the things that have changed, and the world is changing, and whether it has mixed use or not, you know what? You can put it in, and if it doesn't work in six months or later, they change it to whatever they want. And I'm not disagreeing with you, sir. I'm just saying that the world is changing so quickly. You, you have a sickness, you call a doctor on the cell, on the, by Zoom. That's how it is. And it's getting worse. And I've said it before, Ybor City downtown was the main shopping center. All of a sudden, Northgate and, and Brick Plaza opened up, closed downtown in Ybor City. Then the malls came in and closed down. Now they're reviving again. Now we don't know where to go. The malls are no longer like they used to be. They have very little, and they're all changing to like Midtown. 
It's going to be like New York City. You live, you play, everything in that area where you live. So I'm not disagreeing with you, but it's a hard thing to do because times are changing and it's, it's a realistic thing, that's all. Mr. Citro, you reckon? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I, you know, I, I, I'm split in the middle here agreeing with uh, Councilman Miranda and, and then agreeing with Councilman Dinkfelder. I was just perusing through an email that was sent uh, to the CRA board about a study that was done in Ybor City. And one of the number one things they wanted was retail. David and, and Mr., uh, excuse me, Mr. Hay and Mr. Benson, uh, there, there's got to be a way that it's not the burden of, of, of the city to prove that we need this retail space or that we want this retail space. In my opinion, there should be a, a percentage set up and then have the burden put on the developer or the petitioner that says, okay, we don't need that now. We don't need that much now. And because I, I think we're all seeing the trends that are happening now. People want to be able to walk outside of their, uh, of their uh, condominium or their home and walk four or five blocks and go to a little retail store. Whether it be a hair salon, salon, shoe store, laundry mat down in Ebor City, they, they want laundry mat down there. So, I, you know, I, I hear what both these councilmen are saying. But again, there should be some sort of percentage in a mixed use that the petitioner has to prove the burden of proof. Okay, we don't need that here on this dead end road. Or to say, yes, we want it. That, that's, that's my thought, uh, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I love both. I love this discussion because, um, Charlie, you, you emphasize a good point. Times are changing and, and the market changes. And, you know, I was around when Bridge Plaza was opening, I think. I uh, remember riding my Stingray. But, um, but Joe, you, you bring up a good point, too. And, and maybe that is the solution. Maybe we create a standard. Okay. which is the presumption it's the presumptive standard but then the, the 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 developer has the ability to rebut it and get a waiver from that standard just like we do with a lot of our standards and i think i think you might have hit on something um but i think to be standardless is, is risky and and here's what here's what i'm talking about i'm not saying we live in a capitalist society developers have a right to, you know to to build if they want to build residential and they get and they've got the right zoning for it etc cetera, etc cetera, you know they're going to build residential and, and I'm not saying we, we we're mandating that mixed use David but what I'm but what I'm saying is is that in this case we're not only we're not mandating but we're giving them this FAR option which is a huge bonus potential over and above what they can normally build. That's what this is all about. It's really a, bo a big bonus opportunity for mixed use. Okay, and that's the way it was designed. I remember the first time Ray Shermonti ever told me what the heck a mixed use project was about 30 years ago, you know, and it was exciting. Um, and everybody was all about it. And, and uh, but, but, but you should, to me, you should only get that, get to use that bonus intensity, that big bump in density, if you really have a mixed use. And if you don't, then it, then it falls back to wherever it came from. Um, and, and Joe, I, I really, really like that idea is, is you know, if 20% was the threshold, it doesn't have to be etched in stone, but at least that's a starting point. And, they could, and a developer can say, hey, I'm down that dead end road and 20% doesn't work for me. And then he can explain it to us. But at least we have a number to start with. All right. That's great for great discussion for the night. So thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome, sir. All right. And Mr. Chair? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I, I appreciate all this discussion. You know, it's interesting to see uh, uh, New Tampa. I know this was uh, talked about some time ago uh, as, as an area of such rapid growth. Um, you know, that's what th this has a lot of correlation to what we've been talking about with regards to public safety and Tampa fire for New Tampa. Uh, that, that when you see the, the you know, great population boom we've seen in New Tampa, it becomes a tax on the infrastructure and a, ta a tax on the services. 
Um, and, and that's uh, part of what's being reviewed tonight. I always like to tell the story that I remember the first time I ever came out to New Tampa, I was in the eighth grade, and it was 1990. I was coming to a friend's birthday party, a guy I'm still friends with him, and his parents still live out here, um, about five minutes where I live at Joyce. And um, I remember going down Bruce B. Downs with my mom to the, the, it was a baseball party, as I recall, and there, there was nothing out here. And there's about eight or 9,000 people living in, in, in New Tampa at the time. And you fast forward to today, it's about 50, 60,000 people living out here. Uh, to say we've had a population boom is quite the understatement. So, you know, the, the, the narrative that's been going through with regard to New Tampa goes obviously South Tampa, areas that have just been hit by population boom over the last few years. And, and uh, a lot of accommodations could be made for that. And I uh, just wanted to point that out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Is there anybody else to speak on the side? Anybody on the second floor to speak on the side? We're going to transmit. All right. Chair, nobody on the second floor, but I believe there are uh, registered speakers. We have, we have registered three speakers. Registered we got to transmit 14. Well, we got registered speakers first. Oh, you do? Yeah. 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 We have three registered speakers Carol Ann Bennett, Stephanie Porter, and David Mechanic. They're all online. They just need to turn on their cameras and unmute themselves. Right. Now we know two speakers gonna be very interesting. Two speakers, you know that. All right, we got Carol Ann up first. All right, you can have at it. Hi, my name is Carol Ann Bennett. I'm a lifelong resident of South Tampa. Uh, this is a very small change that applies only to South Tampa and New Tampa. Uh, as David said, this is because the comp plan states these districts are unsuited to urbanization and increased density. It states they should be stable and have the lowest amount of growth in the city. Uh, some developers are grossly exaggerating the effects of this little change. Um, developers can still build between 30 and 50 units per acre in New and South Tampa if they build what the zoning allows. They can still use FAR in New and South Tampa if they include some mixed use. They can still get some increased density beyond the zoning in New and South Tampa if they pay for bonus density. They can still use FAR to build single use in the three districts where it makes sense. Randy Goers has said there is plenty of room for single use using FAR in the other three planning districts and the city would love for them to build it there. One of the planning commissioners said it best. Developers want to build in South Tampa and SOG because they can charge higher rents and make more money there. Some developers have had the audacity to say we are trying to direct growth away from SOG because it is a rich white community and they don't want poor renters in their neighborhood. That statement is very ironic since it is their luxury housing that will make SOG richer and whiter than it is now. In reality, SOG is one of the most diverse areas in Tampa. My alma maters, Monroe Middle School and Robinson High School, were naturally integrated before forced busing because Port Tampa had a significant diverse community made up of families who owned their own homes. Currently, SOG is a very diverse community and they like it that way. They want it to stay that way. In 2019, zip code 33616 was 54% white 20% Latino, and 15% Black. For 70 years, SOG has been a place where families of very modest income could realize the dream of home ownership. I grew up in tract housing the MacDill Air Force bases airmen and NCOs could afford. They were small houses for working people and they were affordable. The real threat to the diversity of the community is the luxury housing that has invaded those neighborhoods and put property prices out of reach for average working men and women. The thing that will change SOG from an area where working people with modest incomes can buy a house and raise a family is the gentrification that developers are fighting for. The city staff, some of whom wrote the current language so far, was never meant for residential. In reality, this amendment does not do dearly enough, but it's the first step in the right direction. So yeah, please ask this, me All right, thank you. All right, who we have next, uh, Madam Deputy Clerk? I believe Stephanie is having issues with her camera, um, being that this is a non-quasi item. Stephanie, if you could unmute yourself, you have three minutes to speak. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Sorry about that with the camera. Um, 4A ratio 
it's not been used in all the cases that we've been before the city council in SOG. There are more workarounds than I can count to the removal of this city code. Developers can buy bonus density. Developers can build mixed use and still use the FAR. Developers can build what they are zoned for. I don't know about New Tampa. That's not my area of expertise. I have friends for that. <laughs> but I do know about SOG. <clears throat> and I know that there is not enough room on this peninsula. And there's not enough room, um, and namely in SOG. When we talk about where is there enough room to put this kind of density, it's in SOG. It's not north of Gandy. Uh, I know that we have been overwhelmed by the number of multifamily to exceed the number of single family homes in our area. I know that we are a food desert. I know that none, none, none for a third time, not even one of the homes that have been added to our community in the last five years have been remotely close to affordable. So scratch that developer argument. <laughs> They also need to build some three bedroom units. We are sick up to the top with one and two bedrooms, studios. Nobody's building anything for families down here. So let's, let's call it what it is. It is a bunch of whiny people who are used to getting what they want being denied what they are asking for. We don't need any more one and, bedroom, one and two bedroom apartments. We don't need anything else deemed luxury. We need folks to understand that there are people being pushed out of the communities that they've grown up in since childhood. We need a grocery store. We need a gas station. We need jobs. We need commercial and retail. This land use code has been in place since 1978, 43 years. I agree with Councilman Miranda, it's time for us to get out of the dark ages and move forward. Thank you. Stephanie, let me ask you a question. Ms. Pointer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had a conversation last week. I still haven't received that information, but I was looking what you were talking about where other cities, when they had, they had this old group of development and where they put a stop to it, to where if you want to build, you have to build to what the city's needs are. So if you want to build um, a building for apartments, uh, you've got to make sure that apartment has enough housing for that community. Uh, they are uh, doing some significant rezoning in some other cities across the country. Yes, sir. I'm looking at that. In, in order to address that. So, uh, Do you I, want me to I, send it to you? I'll be happy to. I've got some stuff, but send me what you have. And I think that's what we need to look at. Like Mr. Miranda said, time of changing and housing is a crucial issue. And we may have to look at doing something like other cities are doing to come up with the time. So please give me that information as soon as you can. And thank you for your comments. Thank you. All right. Um, the last speaker is David Mechanic. However, he has not responded, so I'm assuming he no longer wants to speak. So that would end the public comment portion. Okay. Second. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Citro, uh, second that move to close by uh, Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, Ms. Dayfell, move to transmit item 14. Oh, you torture me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in regard to file TA CPA 2111, uh, transmittal hearing on a proposed text amendment establishing a geographic area of the city. You could of just Tampa. move to transmit, sir. Oh, yeah, move transmit. to transmit. That's yep, it. That's it. Second. That's it. Say what, Ms. Miranda. I was Roll wanting call. to hear myself talk. Cedro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. All right, Mr. Shelby, anything, sir? Nothing for me, thank you, sir. Mr. Vieira, anything, sir? Uh, nothing at all, thank you, sir. Uh, if I may say so, a good meeting, a lot of stuff there, and you ran a swift meeting. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Maniscalco. No, sir. Mr. Carlson. No, sir. Mr. 
Citrus. Not this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Stinfo. Yes, sir. Um, David, hey, did you leave already? Oh, there you are. Um, so I would like uh, the Planning Commission staff and city staff and city legal to come back to us by the December, first meeting of December, Ms. Shelby, December 2nd or 4th? 2nd, sir. 2nd during staff reports with an update um, on this issue of, of what, if any, thresholds should be used for mixed use development. Motion on the floor, second by Mr. Carlson. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank Motion you. Motion carried. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Thank you. No, sir. All right. Uh, gentlemen, again, uh, long day. Uh, instructed Mr. Shelby to look in some other options for us for these uh, long agenda items that we've been facing. And also want to uh, give a shout out to the Tampa Police Department. Uh, there were five indictments. Uh, I, I spoke, did speak to the chief of police. He's out of town on a conference, but uh, he's got the troops here working, and apparently there may be some more indictments coming as well. Uh, so I'm happy to see that justice for the little girl. As at this point, we hope we get some convictions, but right now, yes, you know, it's the big thing. Uh, there's no excuse for that type of violence. Four-year-old was killed unjustly, didn't, didn't live her life, so someone has to pay for that, unfortunately. But uh, Mr. Maniscalco. Mr. Chairman, did your, you and your brother handle the funeral services? No. Okay. But uh, we, 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 I'm grateful that we had uh, the police department work around the clock to finally uh, get make some arrest. Uh, move to receive and file. So move. All right, move to by Mr. Citrus, same way Mr. Randall, in favor? Aye. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.